Welcome to the Lab Walt Show, where we talk about life and God and everything in between from a biblical and scientific point of view, because that is how I see the world. And for this week, we have another episode of Genshin Impact. Alrighty. Oh, okay, well, I didn't mean to do that, because what's the point of that? There are no enemies there, but there it goes. What to do? Huh. Alrighty. Let's see here. Ah, what's there to do this week? Events? Oh. You know what I want to do is actually figure out if we want Nilo or not. We gotta do this one. I'm assuming there really is no sound to it, but let's find out, shall we? Okay, audio. Let's just hike it up just to see if there's some kind of voice acting. Paimon, coming in! Paimon, coming in! Voice acting, is then... Okay? Can you hear that is a bonus, and if there's not, then oh well. Okay. Alright, let's find out here. Let me see here. Is this the correct page? Yeah. Game sound. Here we go. I'm supposed to be able to hear it, but currently I hear nothing. Is it because it's muted right now? Nope. Maybe it's because I can't hear anything. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put in the noise cancellation. Okay. There's that. And... Oh, oops. I accidentally cancelled it out. You should always open it. Just in case we need access to it later on. We'll just leave it there. And I'm supposed to be able to hear sound for this game. Let's put that on. There we go. Alright. Now, let's try it out. First, we gotta change out our Seely because she makes this really cute sound. Kind of distracting. So let's change her out for paper. Paper or this? Paper. Let's go with paper. Paper doesn't make sounds. Okay. So now talk to the strange researcher. and see if they're going to be talking to us at all. I see that the diamond is on the side. We could have checked the map earlier, but it's okay. Can I teleport? Oh, I cannot. Okay. So we're gonna have to walk. Alrighty. Oh, it's over there. You see that? You see the line up there? That is where we're going. Okay, hopefully we don't run out of stamina and plunge into our deaths. Look how high up we are. Woohoo! Almost! Almost there! Okay, we made it. Boom. Okay, she doesn't talk. Alrighty. That's all I needed to know. It's not even facing us. Just <laughs> No, no, I'm interested. Let's see where the situation goes. Wait a minute. She looks rather familiar. I don't know about that. I don't remember her at all. Oh, now... Are you talking about me behind my back? Well, we are behind your back. I mean, literally. Okay, so now we can just, like... Go on and on about this. 
and if she's not gonna be talking to us, we can just keep skipping the, the story. Because I don't really like reading. And if Mihoya wants me to read it, then they're gonna have to hire somebody to act it out for me. Yeah? Okay, cool. Coolios. We've agreed. Oh, what is this? You must complete three consecutive challenge rounds during the brewing development chain stages. Each challenge round requires you to defeat opponents that will continuously appear within a time limit. I see. Activating one, four, uh, one to four potential medicinal effects. I mean, I don't think we really need to do all that. I think we'll be able to just fight our way through without actually having to worry about it. At least that's my preferred method. <laughs> I think we're strong enough to tackle anything. We don't really need to do all that, right? Okay. Alright, so now... Let's get our story back out here. Okay! Mm -hmm. Oh! We only have two of these. Okay... We only have two of that. We can do a bunch of stories today. Because we're kind of behind. And we don't have to do a this because we did it already. Okay. Got it, got it. Okay. Let's just do story first, how about that? Astra Avisask. We meet again, you two. Hi, Catherine. Do you have any commissions for us today? Commissions, huh? Hmm. Let me think. Oh, how about this? Please attend the Academia's Academic Symposium this afternoon and recite a love poem on stage. <laughs> uh, wait, say what now? <laughs> and if possible, please also use your camera to capture the reaction of the audience upon finishing the poem. Huh? What kind of commission is that? I feel embarrassed just imagining it. The audience would definitely have a reaction. <laughs> I see. It appears that you're not interested in this commission. Hmm, you think? In that case, mm. please go to Port Armos and convince the Eremites there to spend some time volunteering at the local orphanage. Hey, that's not any better. <laughs> Isn't he just asking for repeating? Mercenaries and orphanage really don't go well together. Mm-hmm. I'm sure mm. the mercenaries will have some interesting reactions as well. Yeah, uh, Paimon's gotta ask. Just who exactly has been submitting these commissions to the Adventurers Guild? Oh, the commissioner? Hmm, well, actually, I just wanted to see the two of you in action. <laughs> You're not actually Catherine, are you? You're Nahida, right? Really? <laughs> Was it so obvious? I was hoping you would actually take one of those commissions. That kind of chance to observe humans doesn't come by often. Ah, so it's Nahida. Paimon just knew Catherine wouldn't crack those kinds of jokes. When did you get into her head? Mm, 
from when she said, Ad Astra Adasask? So it's been you this whole time? Uh, are you done resting up, Nahida? Yes. Mm -hmm. I've been sleeping ever since we parted ways, and I even had a really, really long dream. So the Akasha can't take away, can't take away the dreams of gods? What did you dream about? It was another dream about the Subzerus Festival, except it was a happy one. In my dream, I was sitting in the middle of a flower terrace, and everyone in Sumeru City was holding hands as they danced in circles around me. They danced round and round, and everyone looked really happy. I also got to sit on a gigantic flower carriage. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, raised me really, really high above the ground, and I was throwing an endless amount of Yalda candies at the children. You know, Nahida, maybe your dream is how the Subzerus Festival really should be. It's meant to be a joyous time where everyone gets together to celebrate your birthday. But in reality... Huh? Wasn't I describing a really happy dream? Why are you both looking at me like that? Wait... Could this be an example of the emotion known as pity? <laughs> no, no! We are pity. pitying you! That would only make everything worse. We just don't want you to feel too sad. By the way, have you had a chance to visit Dunyarzad? How's she doing? The Homiyanis haven't allowed any visitors after the festival, so we haven't been able to check on her. Yes, I paid her a visit right after I woke up. She was resting at the time. Her condition is stabilized. However, since Elazar is a manifestation of the withering on the human body, we can only cure it by finding a way to take care of Ermansalt's own withering. But for the moment, our top focus should still be figuring out what the sages are up to and what they're planning. Right. Who knows what will happen if they manage to pull off another scheme like the Samsara of the Subzerus Festival. So our first priority should be investigating and putting a stop to the sages' activities. As for how we should pull that off, let's discuss it somewhere else. There are too many adventurers around here. Good point. Uh, sorry, adventurers. We're gonna be borrowing Catherine for a little while. Nah. Dreams, emptiness, and deception. Wow. Cool, let's go. Let's continue our chat here. Okay, so do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. But for now, I want to hear your thoughts. Possess a key figure in the Academia? Possess the student in Infiltrate, the Sages' quarters? We could grab someone close to the Sages and question them. I want to possess a key figure. Sounds fun. I've already tried that. Oh, okay. But all the key members of the Academia, even the core of 30 guards, intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. It seems that from the very beginning, they've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. Of course, it could also be because they're weary of me. Have you already caught the Sage's attention? I'm guessing not yet. But this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. In any case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. Possess a student and infiltrate the sage's quarters, or grab someone? Mm. Yeah, we can't possess, so we should grab someone. In the dark as of now. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. After all, every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. Okay, then possess a student. No way, that's too risky. Okay, nothing. You mean, it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. 
we shouldn't involve innocent students in this. A single mistake could completely ruin their lives. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? That's a good point. Spoken like the god of Temeru! I can't think of anything else. Mm. <laughs> Are we really out of ideas? Yeah. Nishida, you're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense. Spill the beans already! According to a popular theory from the Vahumana Darshan of the Academia, rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal. Okay, okay, but aren't you the god of wisdom? You don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously. Well, I've been thinking that if I can't directly possess the leaders, and if I can't get ordinary people involved, then I should find someone who's already involved, but hasn't decided to side with the sages. You're saying we should recruit a spy? Hmm, that does sound like it could work. Oh, before coming back, we met someone named Al Haytham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the academia's back. They probably aren't in cahoots. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? Sataria? Paima remembers now! Isn't she the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia? We ran into her basically every time the Subservus Festival repeated itself. You could even say we're old enemies by now. Hmm. Paimon still remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm hmm They've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sataria has always stood out from the crowd. She was born in the desert and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic gifts allowed her special admission into the Academia, and also gave her the opportunity to serve as the Sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert! She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. The star began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light a part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, the star buried her guilt and closed her eyes. It is no longer just a metaphor. Those are Sataria's true thoughts, right? Ooh, yeah. From the sound of it, Sataria's just hung up on the research opportunities here. But she doesn't really support the academia. She still feels guilty about not doing more for the desert, right? She's just running away from her problems. Indeed. When they are presented with complex moral issues, many people will simply plug their ears and go with the flow until the problem can't be fixed anymore. She's suppressing a lot of guilt, but before she realized it, she had already become the sage's accomplice. She can't deny her part in their schemes anymore. Mm, sounds exactly like the person we right. need. Mm. We must somehow make her face her problems again. That way, not only can we get useful intel from her, but she can also use it as an opportunity to redeem herself. From my past observations, Sitaria will take a day off from the Academia every ten days to do some shopping in the city. Tomorrow afternoon just happens to be a shopping day for her. That'll be our chance. To prepare, let's go check out some of her favorite spots and have a quick chat with a few of the vendors there. Mm. 
Interesting. What is this? Investigate. Oh, a riddle or something. Alternating day cycles, homework figure. Hello, traveler. Are you interested in Durs Dreesen's riddle too? Is it really a riddle? Do you know who set it up? It was set up by academia researcher named Drusus. As far as I know, he's an eccentric even among the academia crowd. He loves to talk about riddles with anyone as well as research all kinds of encryption methods. But some of his riddles are too incomprehensible, so not many people. So he came up with solve riddles for prizes idea. Mm. I put this riddle actually hints a treasure cove. Trove. You just have to show up at the right place at the right time, using the right method, and you'll get treasures. Trusus also gave a hint, saying that the locations are all within Sumeru City. But as you can see, the adventurer has been able to succeed! Hey yo! How's it going, Ricky? How's your mom? I'm doing good. I'm glad you're able to help her. Fantastic. How's your week going? How's the studying? Okay, well, we're not really doing the riddle. Huh. I was just reading it because it was twinkling at me. Good so far? Great. Sounds promising. Keep it up until the end of the semester and you'll be fine. We're walking with Catherine. Tarya's favorite fortune telling spot. But it's not actually Catherine, it's actually Nahida inside of Catherine. <laughs> she possessed Catherine. It's kinda of funny. Alright, let's go. Fortune telling spot. Uh, so should we ask the fortune teller about Sataria? No, I already have enough information on Sataria. The most important thing now is for you to pay attention to the vendor's talking style and key characteristics. Talking style and key characteristics? My poor lost lambs. Have you become troubled over your fates? The divine voice of wisdom often echoes between mine ears. If thou be blessed today by the gods, I may be able to show you the way. Huh? Really? Nahida, you've been whispering things to her? Shh. <clears throat> My friend here has some doubts regarding her future. Can we get a fortune reading for her? <laughs> getting higher by 0.2%? Well, at least it's getting higher. It's better than getting lower, because you're already at a C, right? So getting higher is even better. Hmm. <laughs> of course, of course. In that case... Who was? What are these cats? Uh huh. It would seem that Harut and Marut are quite wary of you. Perhaps at some time in the past, you have somehow offended the gods. You're just guessing, kid. What is this? What kind of fortune is this? I reject your fortune. Thank you. Hmm. Only mocking the god of Animo, questioning the lord of Geo's financial savviness, and brawling with the god of Electro. Do those count? <laughs> oh, nothing. Go on, pick an aspect for her to divine. Uh, let me see, my health or love? Let's go with love, shall we? That's, it's non-existent in this world. <laughs> love prospects? <laughs> no problem at all. If she comes, comes back with something, it's a lie, okay? Because clearly we're all asexual in, in Genshin. At least MC is, it seems to me. <laughs> or is it all just fanfiction? Hmm, not sure. Um... <laughs> the gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. One who is fated to cross your path will appear on... On... Huh? So... So many people will fall for you? How could that be? Okay, fine. So many people will fall for you. Alright, that's like fanfiction. You know, like in an anime where <laughs> everybody falls for that one and 
one protagonist. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Air Ace game. You know, we're too, we're too consumed with trying to find our brother in this game. That we have no time for romance, it seems. Harut! Marut! Did you two spoil my divination? I've never read a fortune so absurd. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Uh, actually, Paimon thinks this is probably the most accurate fortune telling you've ever done. <laughs> <clears throat> I admit that the orientation of today's celestial matrix is uh, suboptimal. As such, there will be no charge. Is that so? <laughs> well, that so can't be helped. That's so funny. If you were to bring some food offerings for Hart and Mart on your next visit, perhaps they could help you reverse the wheels of fate. Okay, let's take a look. Hold up, I need to get my chicken nuggets. All right, chicken nuggets, here we go. Let's see. Where, 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 where is it supposed to be? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, ha, over here. Hello. Is this another one of Sataria's favorite stalls? Yep. It belongs to a king. His father helped Sataria a lot when she first moved to Samari City, so she still comes by whenever she has time. When I start talking with him, listen carefully to the details of our conversation. Ah, dear customers. Would you like to look at some pottery? We caught wind of your great craftsmanship, so we specifically came to take a look. Oh, I recognize you. Aren't you Miss Catherine from the Adventurer's Guild? <laughs> Sounds like I'm in for some big business. Speaking of, where did you learn this trade? I suppose you could say it all started with my dad. He's a mason by trade, but I picked up an interest in clay while apprenticing for him. After that, I began making pottery by myself in secret. And I simply changed trades when my works turned out well. Although it's a pity that I'm no longer making much use of the knowledge provided to me by the Akasha. That's nice! You're making a living doing something you love! <laughs> hmm. So is your father still working as a mason? Oh no, not anymore. A few years back, he fell from a roof and broke his leg. Since he had already saved enough Mora over all these years, he's just enjoying the retired life in Port Ormos nowadays. I see. We wish him peace and happiness in his retirement. I'll have someone in charge of logistics at the guild come by another day for some goods. We'll leave you to it. Take care now. No problem. Rest easy, all our goods are sure to meet your every need. <laughs> All right, gather information. This is instructed by the Hida. All right, where to? Where to? Where to? This should be our final stop. Sitaria is always thinking of this restaurant when she's working at the academia, so she always comes by whenever she's out in the city. Nahida, you've really thought of everything. <laughs> it's my duty to protect Samaria's citizens, after all. Hi there. I feel like I've seen you down by the docks before. Huh? Sorry, I don't quite remember. If I recall, you were having a discussion with someone about shipbuilding at the time. Ah... Uh... That's right! I've always been really interested in feats of marine engineering. After all, I grew up in Leeway Harbor and spent my entire childhood staring at the ships going in and out of the port. I came to Sumeru to study, but failed to make it into the academia due to my lack of talent. But <laughs> I'm still discussing all kinds of problems with different scholars, and I'm continuing to study and perform research from the restaurant's basement. I'm sure I'll get to the academia after their next round of exams. 
What an admirable spirit for learning! Amazing! Uh, sure, but you'll find hardworking people wherever you go. So this restaurant has a basement as well? Huh, first I've heard of it. That's right. It's not usually open to patrons. Most of the time, employees use it for breaks or to hold private events. I see. Yes, that makes sense. Well, good luck with your studies, Miss Chishan. How'd you know her name? <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, as doesn't... long as I can make it into the academia as an official student, I'll be happy. She didn't catch that at all. <laughs> makes me laugh every time. Hey. Next person. Uh, where? Oh, over here. Regroup. So, was that everybody? Mm hmm. Three familiar faces should be enough for Sataria. Uh, what's the point of all the information we've collected? Nahida, you still haven't told us how you're planning to make Sataria face her problems. Sataria is already used to avoiding her problems, so we must find a way to break through her usual sensibilities. I remember you mentioned that the Eremites in Port Ormos are all making a fuss about the upcoming resurrection of King Deshret. Although it's all just a boatload of nonsense, the faith of her homeland may turn out to be Sataria's soft spot. Paimon gets it now! You want to take advantage of the guilt Sataria feels about her homeland! Welcome back! Nuggets better than popcorn! <laughs> Although she knows she should return home to help the people of the desert, all she's done is conspire with the sages! Okay... We're trying to figure out who we can... get as a spy. To spy on the sages. So here we go. If King Dashred... Or to criticize Sataria's... Her name's Sataria. I'm assuming it's a she, but... <laughs> Actions. If King Deshra were to make demands of Sataria, which one would make her turn? Oh yeah, it says it right there, she. Criticize. Hmm. So, how do we set that up? Well, King Deshra is long gone. And Sitari is also too smart to fall for any simple tricks. If we simply engaged her under the guise of King Deshret's believers, she would definitely be weary of us, and we may not get anywhere. But if we were to borrow some of her close acquaintances to talk with her, her reaction would probably be very different. So you mean you're going to possess those people we just talked to? Yep. Mm. Possess them through the Akasha, imply they've already converted to the faith of King Deshret, and then convey our made-up will of King Deshret. As long as everything goes smoothly, we'll get through to Sataria for sure. She'll never guess that we had anything to do with it. Ah, so that's how you're going to use all the info we collected on these people. It's so that you won't slip up and break form. Possessing them will only work if you can manage to pass off as them. Exactly. So, best of luck with impersonating them. Huh? Best of luck? But we don't know how to possess anyone! That's no problem at all. I'll just share all their senses with you once I've possessed them. As long as you're also wearing an Akasha terminal, the effect will basically be as if you've possessed them yourself. Huh. <laughs> that is oh, sure. pretty convenient. But why does she have to do this? Can't you do it yourself? Although I've been observing humans for a while, I've never been good at imitating them. Hmm. You're not wrong. It's always been painfully obvious whenever you try to pass as Catherine. <laughs> I'll try my best. <sighs> If it was at all possible, <laughs> I would have preferred to leave these people alone. But seeing how things are now, I probably should just accept it and push on. Yeah, don't beat yourself up over it. We're only doing this to help everyone, and we'll only be borrowing them for a little while anyway. <laughs> all right, then let's give it a go tomorrow afternoon. 
They're like, we're just borrowing these people's bodies for a little while anyway. No big deal. Totally fine. Okay, let's change the time. 12 to 6. That's when the mission starts. Uh, I think it says tomorrow, right? So we'll just go tomorrow just in case. I have no worries. I'm just gonna use their bodies for a little while anyway. Just to help them. So you know. Our motives are pure. Yeah, just for five minutes. <laughs> do anything silly. It's gonna be fine. We're dignified people. Go to the market and carry out Nahida's plan. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Okay, this is the market. This is the first, um, first victim. No big deal. That's right. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna pretend like we're a fortune teller. Here she comes. Satori is here. Okay. Let's quietly follow her. When she starts talking to her acquaintances, we'll find a safe spot to begin possessing them. And then we're gonna we're gonna tell her fortune that will get her to turn on the sages, right? So let's see how that goes. As for how we'll sway her to our side, I'll leave that to you. I trust you'll know what to say. Oh, okay. Paimon's starting to feel kind of nervous. Okay, let's go. Looks like they've already started talking. Let's find a hiding spot and get started. So we're actually the one picking the dialogue? Like, making Nahida say what we want him to say? Okay. Hi, pal! <laughs> Don't worry, we were all late. We are all late. <laughs> okay, we possessed her. That's right. You really can't force anything when it comes to love. And besides, everyone around me has a very different background and outlook. Uh, are you still listening to me, Nabia? Oh, of course I'm listening. You were talking about troubles with your love life, right? I heard everything you said. <laughs> uh, okay, then. You just seemed a little distracted for a moment there. Okay, the cat is still meowing. Strange. They're not talking. The cats seem pretty worked up. Is something wrong? <gasps> they know we're possessed. I just thought they were quiet, happy kitties. Oh, what are their names again? Harut and Marut. Ah, you think you're gonna be able to trick me? Hmm? Ah, that's right. They are just little darlings, aren't they? Harut and Marut. You know what would be funny? If we actually deliberately say the wrong things and see if she's gonna suspect us. Hmm. Or it's just gonna make us fail. And then we have to start all over again. You know, this game does that. <laughs> it's like, oh no! Oh, drat! We got found out! Let's try that again! And again, and again! <laughs> so... Which fortune do you want me to read for you today? You must have come for another echo of the divine voice of wisdom. Hmm... I'd like to get another reading on my love prospects, but to be perfectly honest with you, I feel like I've been a real mess recently. A mess? Well... Um, could you do a reading on how long it'll take me to finish my current project at work? I really just want to get it over with. I hear you. No problem at all. Uh, the gods will reveal the truth. I want to peek my... You know what's funny is that she, instead of just doing her work, she wants to seek a fortune teller to tell her when she's gonna finish with her work that she's not doing right now. Seriously. What? <laughs> uh, you'll finish with the work as long as you do it. And then you'll be done. Hello. <laughs> How's your week going, Pow Pow? I'm glad you could make it. <laughs> um... Hmm, ah, the gods have spoken. Wait, how did Paimon like suddenly show up there? What? Oh, ho, 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 the gods have spoken! <laughs> How extravagant do we want to be? We want to be like really... Well, she's kind of ominous and subtle, right? Not so much like ho-ho-ho. Hmm. Okay. 
let's try to let's try to do this possession properly. The gods are asking, Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Why haven't you gone home? <laughs> you have to do your work. And Papa said, I'll go fortune tell for when I finish the customer's card. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Exactly. You don't have to work on it at all. You just like ask the fortune teller when it'll be done and then maybe it'll give you the motivation to do it. You're like, oh, in five minutes, you say, okay, let me work on it now. It'll only take me five minutes. <laughs> oh. Your week has been hectic. Well, productive is always good, right? As long as nothing dangerous happens. Why haven't I gone home? Do the gods really know everything I've been thinking about? Satoria, why don't you just go home? It's a demand now instead of a question. Oh, the gods seem to be truly upset. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I know I failed the gods. Please pass on my most sincere apologies and ask for their divine forgiveness. And if I may ask, Nabia, is there a specific god who's speaking to you right now? Mm -hmm. How do we know which god is speaking to us right now? Nahida. Hm. What an inconsiderate and naive question. The god who is speaking to me is, of course, the wisest and mightiest of all, King Deshret. Uh, uh, King Deshret? No wonder he would make such demand of me. Uh huh. Wait a second. King Deshret passed away a long time ago. Even though news of King Deshret's resurrection has been spreading like wildfire, it's all just a misinformation campaign from the Academia. How can King Deshret still exist in real life? Hmm. Interesting, huh? King Deshret's resurrection is a misinformation campaign? Well, we are trying to spy and get some information from her, so that's interesting. Okay, that's a clue. What insolence! I am King Deshret's most loyal believer! Do you wish to refute his voice of wisdom? Oh, no, no. As a child of the desert, I am only reveling in his power upon learning that his divine glory has touched even this city. <sighs> I will think very carefully about his demand of me. I'm sorry. I must go now. Uh, wait! Uh-oh. On to the next one. To the next possession. Oh, she just ran off in a hurry. She looked pretty upset too. Well done. Sataria didn't seem to suspect anything amiss. To have something she's been trying desperately to avoid show up out of nowhere and berate her, that must have shaken her to the core. Oh, Nahida, it seems like you understand human emotions really well after all. All I know are some abstract Haribatot theories. In any case, my time with you has shown a lot of them to be utterly useless. I'm still trying to make sense of everything. Anyway, enough of that. Let's hurry and catch up to Sataria. Is that a king now? Right on cue. Let's get ready to possess him right away! Alright! Time to possess him right away! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so excited to see some people. Great, fantastic. Where? Maybe above us. Why am I now in this corner? Did I fall? I fell. I'm gonna talk about our dad. Who fell and broke his legs. It's okay. I just got caught up in something. Oh, actually, didn't you ask me to help you look for work? What kind of work were you looking for again? Uh, gardening masonry. Oh, right. Your old man's craft. Uh, how could I forget? Gardening. Speaking of, how's he doing? Is he feeling any better? He's feeling a lot better, and he's walking more now. He's feeling a lot better. He can lift stuff now. But he broke his legs. I guess we're gonna say walking better now. Seven minutes. <laughs> lift? You think? You think lift? Because you can be seated and your legs lift stuff. Okay. Well, I guess that's better than like walking. Let's see what happens. 
Huh? Wasn't he nursing a leg injury? <laughs> if I recall correctly, his strong arms had always been his pride and joy. Uh, he sprained his arm a while back while trying to show off his strength. I thought you'd heard. Oh, it just makes him, like, come up with some funny things. All right, all right, you can do that. Actually, while we're talking about him, is he still living in Port Ormos? Yeah, he's been retired there for a while. If you could find the time, please write him a letter. Let him know that recently, faith in King Deshret has taken root in Port Ormos and has begun to spread across Sumeru. He has a quick temper, and has always been a devout follower of the Dendro Archon. I don't want him to get into a fight with those King Deshret believers because of a difference in beliefs. Oh? So, who are you siding with in all of this? The Academia, or King Deshret? Uh, I... <sighs> I'm so jealous of you. You were born a child of the desert. Yet you chose to betray King Deshret, and now you spend all your time with those crooks from the Academia. Akim, you don't mean... you've also become a believer of King Deshret? What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise King Deshret? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? C can't pick a side? Me? Whoa! Paimon had no idea you'd be so good at this! <laughs> we are skilled. Before I knew it, I really started getting into the role. I wasn't too harsh, was I? Nope. Not harsh at all. You really zeroed in on the issue and put it right in front of her. <laughs> it might feel a bit overwhelming for Sataria. But once okay, everything is over, I'll be sure to pay her a visit to her mind and explain everything. Anyway, let's keep going. All right. Let's keep going. Ah! I fell! Oh my goodness, I almost died. She must have done this before. Nahida does this all the time. She always possesses people. <laughs> okay, this is the last person. So, Shishan, have you noticed anything weird in the city lately? Like... As if someone was trying to preach to you about something? Uh, it's just the gods comp conspiring. <laughs> Getting you to do things. Mm -hmm. No, I've been spending all my time studying in the basement. <laughs> no, I've been spending all my time studying in the attic. I don't know. Where in the world are you going to study? Basement or attic? Did she say? I forgot. Hmm, let me think. I'm going to say... Basement. Oh, right. Speaking of strange things. Yeah, th you think so too, basement, huh? Okay, let's see if it's right. I celebrated the Subzerus festival so many times that I lost count. That was really weird. Wait, how could you be aware of that? That should be impossible. Nothing in the report indicated anything like that. Are you still failing to realize that the Academia's lowly tricks could never deceive all of Sumeru's citizens? Uh, uh, Shishan, don't tell me that you've converted to King Deshret as well! What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of King Deshret. In reality, shouldn't you be the one who is ashamed? You, who worked side by side with the Academia, and treated people as nothing more than experimental subjects? Please, please stop! Even now, Satari is still trying to run from her problems! We are so skilled. Did I push too hard? <laughs> she can no longer justify everything to herself. Magic. Hey, she's trying to talk to the guards! What should we do? This is the most important part of all. Quick, get ready. Mercenary, you're a member of the Corps of Thirty, correct? Please help me pass a message to the Matra right away. The situation in the city is getting out of control. Please, try to remain calm, miss. Tell me what's happening in the city. Heretics are infiltrating the city, and they've already converted many residents to their side. Oh, okay. 
So she say that she doesn't believe everything that they they're saying. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. So <laughs> we're we're assuming she can't justify it to herself anymore, and she's just like, well, clearly there's nothing wrong with me. It's everybody else around me who's wrong. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Heretics. What kind of heresy are you talking about? Interesting. King Deshred! Many people I know have suddenly started believing in him, but he's long dead. It's impossible! Miss Sataria, nothing is impossible. Y you know my name? King Deshret is immortal, and all who defy him will one day pay the price. You must face the truth, Sataria. You tread a treacherous path, and the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become, and the deeper you will be ensnared. Child of King Deshret, never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise King Deshret? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of King Deshret. Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Seems that no matter where I run, I only keep finding more believers of King Deshret. I have to say, this is a familiar feeling. I've also been running from my guilt this whole time. Guilt over my part in the Sage's plans, and from ignoring the letters from the children of my homeland. But no matter how much I may try to ignore or get rid of it, my guilt always comes back. You should follow your heart. Why haven't you gone home? Because <laughs> oh. apparently I can still just self-justify that I'm making the right choice. So, and also I'm avoiding my problems. Mm-hmm. Totally. <laughs> we totally broke our head. Dun, dun, dun. You should follow your heart. It's not too late to turn back. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is just taking way too far. Also, <laughs> okay, let's see. I don't know about saying you should follow your heart, considering how she doesn't really know. So let's just say it's not. You too won't necessarily back. lose your research opportunities by facing the truth. Besides, did you really want to conduct your research while carrying such heavy feelings of guilt? How do you know me so well? Are you truly just a believer of King Deshret? Or are you the god himself? <gasps> That's not important. The important thing is to pass judgment on the Academia and its sages, and to correct their mistakes. If you could provide some assistance in this matter, perhaps it could serve as a form of atonement. I've actually never believed in the gods, but I've always believed in serendipity. Your appearance must be a fated opportunity for me to get out of this wretched situation. Please tell me, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Great! We finally convinced her! Let's go! <clears throat> How much do you know about the Sage's current activities? I was just one of the designers for the Mast Dream Harvest Scheme, which is what happened around the Subzerus Festival. But I know very little about the full scope of the overall project. I'd assume that only staff with the highest clearance would have access to those confidential documents. I've just been working to meet the Grand Sage's specified requirements. However, there's something that's been really bothering me. I heard that a scholar who was previously expelled has returned to the city, and even the sages are still quite wary of him. Hmm. An outcast that even the sages are still wary of? Huh. You think it's I'll hide them? He sounds like a, an outcast. <laughs> to fight against the academia, we will need to figure out the nature and the purpose of their work. Is there a way for us to get access to the confidential documents you mentioned? It should be possible if we're willing to take some risks. 
After all, I'm an assistant to the Grand Sage, and I've been working on many tasks outside of the project. One thing, though, I won't be able to transfer the documents to you through the Akasha once I get my hands on them. The Sages have always closely monitored all activities within the Akasha. Um, let me see... Uh, let's use the most primitive method. Send someone to pick up the documents tomorrow evening at the Academia entrance. The Academia entrance? Wouldn't that be too conspicuous? Don't worry about that. I assure you, this won't be a trap. I'm only suggesting this location because it'll draw more scrutiny for me to leave the Academia again. It'll be safest for me to distract the guards long enough to hand you the documents. All right, I trust you. So, uh, if I were to successfully complete this task, would it mean I've atoned for my wrongdoings? Um, that'll depend on the judgment of the Dendro Archon. The Dendro <laughs> Archon? That's right. Her people are the ones we have endangered. As the God of Wisdom, she's also the one responsible for judging and guiding the scholars. Maybe it's time for me to find a god to believe in. Just as Nahida predicted, we've managed to bring Sataria to our side! The Traveler's execution was ingenious. She's the one who deserves all the praise. Well, now that we've made plans to meet again tomorrow evening, all we can do is pray for Sataria's mission to go off without a hitch. Pray? But if we're going to pray to the gods, aren't we just praying to you? God of Wisdom <laughs> and Guardian of the Scholars? <laughs> Me? No, no. The truth is the true Guardian of Scholars. I've always believed that. Anyway, let's meet again tomorrow evening at the Adventurer's Guild. She's such a humble god. She said, Me? No, no. The truth is the true Guardian of Scholars. <laughs> Ah, huh, that's nice. Alright. Let's get behind that. Alrighty. Okay, so now we're gonna do following night at 7 p.m. Yes? Alright, let's go. Tomorrow it's gotta be 7 p.m. That means 19. There we go. So funny. You know what's funny? I'll take one more day off and Let, uh, I've got the rest of the work once I'm feeling up to it. There's a Christian channel on Twitch that uh, they have a Christian church, and and uh, I guess the pastor's wife started playing um, Genshin Impact, and and they're like, you know, there's a controversy about playing these kinds of games because you know Genshin has a lot of gods in it false gods you know they have Baal you know like if you read the Bible uh, the Old Testament has uh, has a god named Baal that people like to um, worship and in the Old Testament and uh, so much so that they kind of like sacrifice people and, the world is a whole and have like prostitution you know from. and all that kind of stuff come up with shrine prostitution is what they call it which is like uh, worshiping the god there. You have to like sleep with the shrine maidens or whatever. But anyway, or just shrine prostitutes. And so, so they're like, is this is this safe? Is this a safe game for Christians to play? Because of that, and I was like, seriously. <laughs> you know, Paul Paul even talked about this because uh, people are so into like laws and stuff and restricting things and he's like well you know even if people sacrifice or you know pray over their food and and offered it is it's an offering for different gods that they may have if you don't believe that it's an offering for those gods because you don't believe in those gods right because you only believe in the one god and so it shouldn't really bother you <laughs> at all. You can still eat it. It's totally safe. You know, you just pray to God. You're, you're God. You know, you bless the food and thank you. I got a new food. letter from your informant. So it, it's like kind of, situation has it's kind of uh, an extreme idea that 
if you were to engage in these activities that somehow you're going against God and stuff, like you have you have no semblance of self control or <laughs> or loyalty to God or something. You know, just because you like play such games and watch such shows. I just like seriously you're not worshipping them, it's just a game. Exactly, right? It's uh, exactly. It's like when you're trying to learn about like Greek mythology and you know, just studying it because it's interesting, right? I, I like to, you know, read about like mythology and different gods and stuff like that because I find it interesting. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that I believe in, in those stories or that I worship Zeus and, you know, pray to, to Miranda or whatever, you know? <laughs> You know, for wisdom and stuff like that. So it's kind of funny that people think such things. I'm just like, dude, you guys are so extreme. <laughs> but I, I, but it was just something that uh, somebody brought up in their stream and stuff like that. But of course, you know, as they are gamers, they're they're uh, church for gamers. So they need me to come totally for you. Just went and like, you know, it's totally fine. The game. You know, just like the movie, the game, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, you're worshipping it or anything like that. You know. Yeah, it's just fiction, exactly. Exactly. You know, it's because there are some people who kind of... Have you heard of those people who kind of um, worship all kinds of gods? Like, they don't believe in one god. They kind of go to church for every, like, for every god and kind of thing, you know? And... And so instead of being monotheistic, they're kind of like polytheistic, and they, and and they do that because they don't really know what the truth is, and so they figure, oh, might as well just cover all my bases just in case, you know, when I die, <laughs> if the, if you know, if it's not this religion, it's some other religion. Like I've covered all of it, right? Like I've <laughs> prayed in the Buddhist temple, I have prayed in the friggin like Muslim temple, Hindu temple. Christian temple, like Jewish, Jewish temple. I'm like, I've covered everything, so it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you know, panistism, something like that. Oh, you know what it is? I thought it was polytheism. Theism is like religion, right? So poly is like you have a lot. Kind of like being polygamous means you marry a lot of different people. As uh, compared to monogamous, which means you just marry oh, one person. Good role. Or you're just uh, committed right, to one person. Maybe I'll take one uh, so it's kind of like that. So it's the rest monotheism, the which is one it. god, which is Christianity. Or polytheism, which is, I guess, like Hinduism. Which you have a lot of gods under the Hindu religion, right? Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. What happened? Meet up in the Hida. Where, where is she? down here. Oh, she's here with the with the fortune teller, isn't she? No. Oh, she's with Catherine. She's with Catherine. She's up here. <laughs> okay. Ah, 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 I'm stuck. Oh, there it is. Okay. Catherine, we're here! Oh, um, you are the other Catherine, right? <laughs> Like Catherine would know, how would she know that she was possessed? If you're asking her, you are the other Catherine, right? Oh, okay. I see. Because the other means Nahida. So if that's the real Catherine, she'd be like, what are you talking about? What do you mean other Catherine? Although, there are a lot of Catherines in every single city, so they do know that they're all other Catherines in every city. Hmm. Overthinking much? <laughs> That's right. I suppose I'm the other Catherine in your mind. Yeah, that's right, because you're not really the real Catherine. Can we just call her Nahida? Yeah, it'd be easier that Shh. way. We're on a secret mission tonight, so we need to protect Catherine's identity. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry, Paimon. Yes, you're right. Totally. That is Catherine. Just the other Catherine. Because there are a lot of other Catherines. Yep. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yep. Paimon's <laughs> right. We cannot fully rule out the chance that the meetup tonight is just a trap. If something were to happen, my existence may be the only trump card we'll be able to play. After all, the Academia should still be unable to confirm the existence of my consciousness in the outside world. Yep, yep! Exactly! Just what Paimon was thinking! That's right! <laughs> 
Anyway, enough about that. Let's just make sure to be on our guard. Anyway. Speaking of which, don't you feel like something is off? Hmm, like we're walking into a trap? I don't know, let's see. Off? What do you feel is off? I just feel like something's off. It's a little too quiet here, uh oh. It's the middle of the night. Where's everybody? Of course it's oh. quiet. You're not getting paranoid, are you? <laughs> totally not. Yeah, you're right. It's the middle of the night. Of course it's quiet. No, I think she's right. It really is a lot quieter than usual. If you look around, there seems to be fewer people on the streets. I'm not sure if this is the case for the entire city, though. Huh. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe Sataria figured out a way to not only distract the guards, but also to get everyone to go to sleep early, just so we can exchange the documents in peace. I also can't quite figure out why things feel a little off. But now that we're here, let's go ahead and meet her as we planned. Well, regardless, as long as you're here with us, Paimon feels a little safer. Okay. Let's see what happens. And if it's a trap, then I guess it'll be more exciting. <laughs> Unable to teleport. Oh. We actually have to walk there? Are you kidding me? What do you mean? Huh. There really aren't many people out right now. Let's hope it'll be this quiet in front of the academia and that Sataria managed to distract all the guards. We have to walk there. We have to say, hey, we're actually on a mission. We can't just teleport. Okay. Uh, what are all these people doing here at this hour of the night? Uh, ah, the triumphant hero returns at last. And to a rather spectacular welcome. Even if I do say so myself. Expelled from the Academia! Indeed I am. Although these days they tend to call me... The Doctor. <laughs> if you're looking for your researcher friend, she has already been taken into confinement. With some basic caution, she could have discovered the listening device on her person. Clearly she lacks the degree of rigor expected of a true scholar. <laughs> People of Samir City! What have you done to them? I simply made some minor adjustments to their Akasha terminals. Now they can deposit information directly into the subconscious. As you can see, all these lovely people now believe this traveler is a hero who has just saved the world. <laughs> My experiment is a success. And now, it seems, they can no longer hold back their sheer adoration. Uh, no! What should we do? These are all just regular people! It's a fortune. Leave now! You need to get out of here! What? That guy's a Fatui Harbinger! We can't just leave you here! Nor can I abandon the people of Samaru! I'm glad you fixed it. I see. You appear to have overridden their mental faculties with your own consciousness. To possess such a powerful mind, you must be the God of Wisdom. That Fatui is playable, right? 
kind of want to pull him. This should be far enough. <sighs> Paimon needs to catch her breath first. Uh, is Nahida going to be okay? We only made it out because of her. She can jump between vines. Hopefully she'll be fine. Not sure that guy was pretty terrifying. Hmm. Yeah, hopefully she'll be fine. I mean, he's not a god. He's just a Fatui. Those are humans. Evil, but still human. <laughs> Paimon wasn't counting on running into a new harbinger here. Let alone such a high-ranking one. That guy was number two. So scary. Oh, number two. Mm. He called himself the Doctor. Remember, Tainari told us about him. Sataria did say that someone who once got expelled from the Academia came back recently. And that even the Sages are wary of him. Yep. Sounds like she must have been talking about the Doctor. We underestimated the scale of this problem. The number of parties involved. Yeah, now that the doctor's in the picture, we're no longer just dealing with the academia, they're in cahoots with the Fatui! But wow. what are the Fatui after this time? Another Gnosis? Yeah, things would be a lot easier with Nahida's help. Nahida said we'll meet again outside of the city, but we can't just keep waiting around, right? Let's start our own investigation. Let's go find someone else who might be involved. Well, cool. I wonder, do we see I'll hide them? Uh, you mean... Oh, Tignari. Okay. Oh, right! Wasn't he invited by the sages to work on some project when we were staying with him in the Vidya Forest? That has to be the same project! Even though he turned it down at the time, he might still know something. There's no time to lose. Let's go to Gundarvaville. Hey, Gundarvaville. Let's go. Do, uh, so, so that's why we couldn't teleport earlier, because there was a show. A cutscene. Okay, here we go. We have a lot of story to catch up on, so I guess this week we'll just do story and then next week we'll do the event, I guess. Hold it right there! A blonde-haired traveler and a floating fairy. We've got you, all right. Take a look around. You've fallen right into our trap. Ah! Are you mercenaries from the Corps of Thirty? Did you come here to arrest us? Corps of Thirty? We're nothing like those government lapdogs who don't even get scraps for their work. We are an elite brigade that commands the highest commission rate in all of Sumeru. We're here on the orders of a client known only as the Outcast. The Outcast? Oh, that's the Tore. An Outcast the from the Academia? Yep. But why wouldn't the Doctor just send the Fatui after us? Local mercenaries might have an edge over the Fatui. Maybe he's taking advantage of the Academia's resources. Mm. Still wasting time on idle chit-chat. We'll shut you up soon enough. Get them! Uh, you're up, Traveler! New hunting. Inadmissible evidence! Motion to compel! Stabilize. Take that. Gotcha. Uh, incinerate. Uh, whirling snow. Uh, motion to compel. Uh, uh, 
So many of them. What? Okay, fine. That was pretty rough. Is that what elite mercenaries are like? Probably won't be long before we see more of them. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Looks like we'll have to keep our guards up. Like, not anything. But this doctor guy seems like a pretty tough opponent. He knew exactly where to set up an ambush. Did he predict that we would try to find Kainari? Ugh. Going up against smart people is tough. Anyway, let's keep going. Kainari! Can I teleport now? Or... It's just ahead of us, though, so I guess we can just We don't fall down, that is. Ha! Ah. Hello, Cole! Oh! It's the Traveler and Paimon! What are you two doing back here? Again. Are you doing all right? I... To be honest, I'm not doing too well. My Elazar has been progressing at a faster rate lately. I'm finding it harder to complete more intricate tasks. As a result, Master Tainari is taking me off the patrol schedule. He will only allow me to stay here and coordinate other people's tasks. It seems that curing Ermin Soul is our only chance. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure that out too. Cure her Speaking of, of Tainari, did he go off on patrol? We're here to talk to him. Oh, Master Tainari? You just left the Avidia Forest a little while ago. He was headed to Party's DI. Huh? <sighs> he left? <laughs> isn't Tainari always saying that he never wants to leave the Avidia Forest? He even turned down the sage's invitation! I thought it was weird, too. Master Tainari always prioritizes his work as a forest watcher above everything. He almost never leaves his post. He left in a hurry this time, though. No, I only found out that he left through a message he left behind. He also made sure to delegate all his tasks using a schedule. <sighs> To leave in such a hurry? I guess he had something urgent to take care of. Hmm. Master Tainari originally studied in the Amorta Darshan of the Academia, and part of the eye is something like the Amorta's research base. Many rare shrubs and grasses have been planted there for research. I know that before he became a forest watcher, Master Tainari once spent a long time conducting research of Pardis the eye. A research base, huh? Gotta wonder what kind of research Tainari just decided to work on all of a sudden. Oh, we don't have a lot of time, so let's go look for him at Party CI. Party CI? That's what we call it? Please take care of yourself. Don't push yourself too uh, hard. Don't worry. I'm fine. I'm used to living with Elazar by now. If you run into Master Tainari, please send him my regards. Will do. Got it. Will do. See you later. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's see if she's saying something. Else. I had already made up my mind, to be honest with you. So I didn't try to hide my current condition. <sighs> Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Part is D ha. What? D ha. Where is it? I don't see it. Oh no! I have a character somewhere. Catherine is busy at the start of contamination. Okay. So we have to release her from that. Where the dad is. Is this. No. Is this the one?
the start of contamination. Do you see that one? Uh, Arama, Arama. Oh, you mean this one, the start of contamination. I don't even know what this is. Why would she be stuck here? Oh my god. A blade is like. Okay. I'm sure we can easily release her. No, no big deal, right? Traveler, you've come at a good time. Wait, this sounds like another commission. <laughs> it is as you say. The commission this time around is of high importance. It pertains to the safety of the Avidia Forest's inhabitants. Huh? What happened? Not long ago, we received word that a section of the Avidia Forest seems to have become contaminated. Contaminated? You mean, a new withering zone? I don't know about the specifics, but I hear that strange things are happening to people who cross through that region. The Avidia Forest's inhabitants won't leave their homes so easily. If we allow this contaminated region to expand, the consequences could be unimaginable. That's why I want to ask you to investigate the situation. Even if all you can do is stop the contamination from spreading, that will still save many people. This is forest business. Mm. Maybe Tainari will know something. Let's go find him! Okay. Okay, now we can go to Tainari, but then that's different, right? So... Let's go back to the quest that we had before. The one we actually want to do. Okay, so that's the one. Just to make sure that it's the one. Okay. <laughs> Nakita! Thank goodness you're okay! We were so worried about you! You are Nahida, right? You haven't been reprogrammed by the doctor, have you? Hey! This was supposed to be a touching reunion, <laughs> but you're ruining the moment! Sorry. <laughs> Actually, it's very smart of the Traveler to be wary of me right now. After all, the doctor has shown that his technology can apparently even control human minds. Plus, it's not like you could have known what happened after we split up and I was facing the doctor by myself. Even a pool of stagnant water after a torrential storm can occasionally pass as a patch of sky. Hmm. Paimon feels like only the real Nahida could come up with such an obscure analogy. I believe you. Huh? But... I wasn't trying to win your trust or anything. All I wanted was to clarify my point. Well, we understand that point now. Please, Nahida, tell us more about what happened. Are those poor people all right? When you left, I was still in the middle of restoring everyone's minds. Thankfully, when the doctor mentioned depositing information into the subconscious, he didn't mean engraving information into their minds. Instead, he did something closer to creating hallucinations. That was still within my power to fix. Luckily, I managed to finish my restorations and mind jump away from him just as he was about to capture me. Whew. What a relief. The doctor sure pulled out some hidden cards, but good thing we had Nahida with us. I wouldn't be relieved just yet. I gave away my true identity when I restored everyone's minds, which means we've lost another one of our trump cards. Oh no! Dinner calls, Papa. All right, have fun. Time to use some salt from the salt tower for seasoning. Exactly. Gonna be yummy. Also, 
The doctor is already an expert at modifying Akasha terminals. Maybe it's only a matter of time until he captures my consciousness inside the Akasha. Oh no. Would that mean you'd no longer be able to jump between minds? Then how do we stop him? He's still at the Academia, so it's possible he already started messing with the Akasha. Wait, hurry. Our position will only get worse with time. Go. It feels like he's toying with us. What a nasty piece of work. I want to see more Dottore. Yes. The doctor's combat ability alone is apparently enough to make him worthy of being number two of the Fatui. We shouldn't give up hope just yet. Let's try to find another way to attack this problem. Actually, Nahida, how did you know we were trying to get to Party Stii? Have you been waiting for us? Yes, I have. I can see the Traveler's elemental energy, so I deduced your destination by looking at the direction you were moving in. You didn't come here for sightseeing, right? Did you find any leads? We're looking for a scholar we know. His name is Tainari, and the sages once tried to reach out to him. Why don't you come inside with us and see what we can find? Okay. Let's just hope we won't get him into trouble. Okay, now we're gonna go back up there. I thought we we're gonna go see to Tignari, but I guess we bumped into the heat first. Ooh, who's that? Baiju. Is it Baiju? No, just kidding. It's somebody else. So <laughs> oh. Traveler? It is you! Ah! It's Apasia! Long time no see! Ah, what a pleasant surprise! It's so nice to see the two of you again. Who's this? She's a scholar we met in the Avidia Forest. When we last saw each other, she was still training in the... Uh... What's it called? Satyavada Life? Oh, I see. That's right, we're old friends. Uh, you've come at just the right time. Ever since I've come here, hardly anyone has even talked to me. Hapasia, you're way too excited about this. Actually, for you to leave the Avidia Forest means... Oh, you're not in training anymore? Wait, no. Did you already finish your training and reach Pari Porno Life? Congrats! <laughs> what do you think? My consciousness has already managed to make contact with the Divine. <sighs> you did it? Congratulations! I'm really happy for you. <laughs> it's so exhilarating to share this sublime joy with others at long last! <laughs> when my consciousness made contact with the gods. Ah, uh, what a supreme and unparalleled experience that was. That sounds incredible! Catherine just like, like, what? <laughs> Actually, we're here for Tignari. We're in a hurry, so let's chat about this another time. That's not nice. <laughs> These things are nice to say. Okay. Oh, all right. Actually, please wait. I haven't forgotten my promise to you. Remember? I promised to help you understand what you saw from Ermansoul once I gained deeper insights. Mm -hmm, yeah. My current self has not only gained true insight, but I can even help you establish a direct connection to the consciousness of the divine. Whoa. You, you can do that? You leave her, Nahida. I've never heard of anything like that, but... If you want to give it a try, I'll do my best to protect your consciousness during the process. It's fate! Hold on. I brought some spirit borneo with me. This is still a crucial part of the ceremony. It's all made up. I don't want it. We're using that incense again? 
<laughs> the one that made us pass out. All right forest. now. Hold my hand. I'll help you establish a pathway to connect your consciousness. To the tree? Okay. Okay. We're so trusting. Ready? It took three betrayals for me to finally understand. The world is just an elaborate tapestry of lies. My fury will never be quelled. The first to betray me was a god. My creator. My mother. Valuing strength above all. She saw no worth in me, and I was discarded. The second was a human. My family. My friend. Consumed by fear, he saw me as an abomination. The third was one exactly like me. A hope for the future. A fledgling barely out of the nest. Powerless before his mortality, he broke his promise to me. Humans, they can't be trusted. And the gods fill me with pure loathing. So I said good riddance. <laughs> I denounced the world and laugh in its face. <laughs> My chest will never again be defiled by worldly filth. I will scrub away every last trace of human emotion. Then it will be empty, a blank slate, and ready to receive a supreme gnosis, brimming with pure divinity. <laughs> Neither the greater lord's consciousness nor King Deshret's consciousness. Yeah, it's fake. It's it's got a moosh. What? But at the same time, he felt betrayed that the kid died. It's like, uh huh, he died. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you. you. Should be sad about the fact he died and not that he betrayed you because he died. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> oh. All right. Did we actually just see the Balladeer's memories? Everything matches what we know about him. I want to unlock How the shrine. How connected to the divine consciousness that Hapasia was talking about? You saw it, right? You felt it, right? Oh, such a majestic god. Such a noble will. Such sublime emotion. Remember when the Hito was saying fake news? Yeah. She tapped into something else. That's not that's not any god. Baladir is just a Fatui, not a god. And interestingly, so is that uh Raiden, the god of you know, Inazuma, Electric Electro, actually made him. How interesting, huh? Hmm. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then he was rejected, so he became a Fatui. So that he could get get a gnosis. Interesting. Definitely fake news. <laughs> I was like, what? We're expecting to, to tap into the tree that we were in before, but this is totally not what we asked for. Alas, shame. If only... If only that which beats within my chest wasn't a filthy mortal heart. Oh, great and merciful God. Please grant me forgiveness and salvation. Yeah, no thanks. Pass. Bye. Can we go now? <laughs> Do you understand now? I'm afraid this is no peripoint of life, but rather... Wake up, Hypatia! 
You're going down the wrong hole. <laughs> Bad. Bad. Brainwash. You. Why are you so mean to me? Why is everyone hiding from me? I found divine wisdom. Shouldn't I receive praise and honor? Haven't I uncovered that light in the darkness? Papaya? That's how I always thought everything should be. Wait... Have I... Already lost my mind? She lost her mind, oh no. All these angle shots, right? <laughs> Yeah, animation is good though. I like it. Wait, something isn't right. Oh no. Hey, when do we open? Uh oh. You're a god, you don't really die, but actually they kinda do, but what happened? Uh oh you got captured. <laughs> this is Skyrimush. I've been trying to unlock this boss. I mean, when I say that, I mean, I have not done so. So it's on my to-do list. Kathleen <laughs> can't die, she's a bot. That we found out last time. <sighs> okay, we finally lost him! <gasps> Are you okay, Nahida? Wait, no. Something feels different. <gasps> You're back! Oh, the Traveler's back? Wait, you mean you mean Nahida possessed me? Oh, cause cause we touched fingers, so Nahida possessed her. Okay, or me, my my character. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah, what just happened? Nahida was controlling your body for a while. It seemed like she jumped over to you as an emergency measure right before the Catherine puppet was destroyed. Yeah, Catherine puppet. Yeah, it's a bot. Yeah, we we knew that it was a sh 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 I can't even say that. <laughs> Shnesnaya. Bot, remember we found that last time, um, and Sh Shisnaya is basically where the Fatuis are from, which are the bad guys, you know. So yeah, she wasn't real. She's a puppet. That's why they have Catherine in every single city. Remember, I was telling you that there are a lot of Catherines. So I guess that destroyed the the Sumeru Catherine, and that means Sh Shisnaya has to send them a new one. I guess I don't know. We'll find out. Or is she uh, is Sumeru just gonna have an empty spot for Catherine? Hmm. Wonder, wonder. Okay, let's go. After that, Kainari heard the commotion and came over. He helped us defeat the mercenaries and then he ran with us all the way here. Cool, cool. This time, she didn't just transfer her mind into my body. Our mind swapped places. Oh! Our mind swapped places. That's why we were in that little Nahida bubble. Oh, interesting. Okay. What? You swapped places? You mean your consciousness also <laughs> went into Nahida's body? Wait, then where is Nahida's consciousness? Where is she now? I never imagined that an individual's consciousness could be transferred around like this. Had I not seen it with my own eyes, I would have never believed it. I don't think this can be achieved with current human technology. Also, while we were running, the consciousness in your body told me to pass on a message. She said, The doctor has found a way to trap my consciousness, so I can't journey with you anymore. 
Oh no! That's why she was in a bubble. Nahida was in a bubble because she got trapped by the doctor. Oh, this is awful. What? But even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. <sighs> oh no! Hades trapped in the sanctuary of Surasthana for good this time! Was that message all she left for us? It's pretty vague. It's in a code that only we know. We can't let the doctor figure out what we're up to. Oh, so. that makes sense! Since the doctor captured her, she won't be able to say anything without him knowing! She's being extra careful. Uh, Even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. Huh. Paimon knows the moon illusions and lies are from the alchemical divination at the Subzeru's festival. Didn't Nahida use a starlight analogy before? It had something to do with Sataria. Hmm. The moon refers to Nahida herself. Starlight refers to the people of the desert. Illusions and lies refers to the academia's plan. Cool. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Huh. Do you think Nahida was telling us to go find help in the desert? But she isn't with us anymore. Uh, think we'll be okay? Paimon, you said Sanctuary of Surasthana, correct? Does this mean that this Nahida you're talking about, the consciousness who was occupying the Traveler's body, is... the Dendro Archon? Nah. Uh, yes. Your guess is correct, but the <laughs> situation's a bit complicated, so it's really hard for us to explain right now. That's all right. A scholar's curiosity doesn't need to be appeased right away. As for the complicated nature of the situation, <laughs> safe to say I have witnessed that for myself. I've spent some time with you, and it looks like the Dendro Archon's also on your side. So, I trust you. Thank you, Tainari. Oh, actually, we came here to ask you a question. What do you know about the project that the Sages have been working on? Ah, that. While I was indeed invited to join that project, the Sages were always secretive about its scope and goals, so I eventually declined. All I know is that the project has something to do with the restoration of Ermansoul. Hmm, I think I know what the project is about. I just received some new huh? info. Did you see something when you were in Nahida's body? Oh, Academia is turning the Balladeer into a god, so that green-haired lady was right. Oh my goodness, what? Balladeer is Skarmush. He was the big robot earlier. What? <laughs> Do you have any evidence? I saw a nascent god under construction, and Hypatia also showed us a so-called divine consciousness. Oh, I see. Hmm. Hmm. So that's what happened. That explains why Hypatia's symptoms were different from those of the other scholars who went mad. It's because she made contact with the consciousness of a new god who is still in the process of being born. Tainari, did you leave the Avidia Forest because of Hapasia? I did. I noticed Hapasia's mental anomalies, but since her symptoms were rather atypical, I secretly took her to Pardis Di and began searching for a way to return her to her normal self. If I didn't take action, Hapasia would have already been taken by the Matra to the desert, doomed to a life of exile at Aru Village. Now that you mention it, I knew the Academia has never thought particularly highly of Lesser Lord Kusanali, but... but I still didn't expect them to do something as... arrogant as creating a new god. Looks like I made the right decision by not accepting their invitation. The Fatui is also behind some of this. The Fatui may have banned the flames. Okay, so you say that they they really don't... They figure they need a new god, so they just try to make one. Wow. They're human. <laughs> you know what? It, it, it reminds me of... You know how um the Buddhists 
And they have a Buddhist statue, and they have Buddha statues everywhere, right? Which I actually didn't know that there's a skinny Buddha and there's a fat Buddha. I always thought the fat Buddha was Buddha, but actually isn't. So in Buddhism, actually, a Buddha is not a god. It's just that you, when you reach nirvana, I guess, whatever their highest uh, state of consciousness, where you're like selfless and all that kind of stuff, um, that's how you reach, like, then you become a Buddha, right? So there are a lot of Buddhas <laughs> that are basically like have reached that uh, state in Buddhism. And so they're not really gods, right? Uh, but anyway, so they have these little statues of Buddha in a gacha machine. <laughs> you know, like if you go to a a mall where they have a gacha machine is, is where they have like these little cute, um, actually, I can show you what that is. Let's, let's Google it. Let me see if I can Google an, oh, a Google an image. Unless, or I could just send it to, uh, Gacha Buddha. I could also send it, I have a picture on my phone. But, oh, here it is, I found it. Um... So, this is what it looks like. Let's share my screen. Ah. Transition. Okay, it's being covered, but uh, being covered by chat, but uh, it's this one. What happens if I move it? Does it move things? Oh, okay. It 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 does. It does. Okay. I see. Okay. I see it now. Okay. Here. <laughs> right. Um. So this is the Buddha machine, right? And then you can you can get these little statues. <laughs> So basically, your god is literally, or whatever, right? Like, your god is literally in a toy figure machine, gacha machine. Isn't that insane? Is that kind of crazy? And what it looks like is... Gacha machine. It's these, these machines where you can, where you can get your little figurines, you know, like Genshin or... Right, anime, right? <laughs> you know, so you're trying to like get your cute little uh toy and then you get these gods in there. <laughs> you know, these Buddha gods. Oh my goodness. Isn't that crazy? Uh, right? It's your it's not a good screen. Okay, yeah. All right. You have these cute little things and they also have they also have the gods. <laughs> so it's funny because when you read the Bible and they say that they uh, humans craft their gods out of wood and you know and there it is. <laughs> and there it is. You can actually get it from a toy machine. Woohoo <laughs> Oh, it's kinda of funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, idols, exactly. It's crazy. <laughs> the doctor and the balladeer. We have two Fatui harbingers in Sumeru. Sounds like we're in for a bad time. From your description, I don't think they've completed their project. There may still be room for us to intervene. But then, what is the connection between creating a new god and restoring Ermansoul? It feels like we're still nowhere close to figuring out the sage's goals. Let's head to the desert for now. We must stop them no matter what. Right! We've pretty much gone over everything we need to know, so we should head out. How about you, Tainari? What are you going to do? I'll stay here for now. I still want to try a few more things to help Hapasia. If you're planning to go into the desert, 
Start by heading for Caravan Rebot. That'll be your fastest route. Come find me here if there's anything else I can do to help. May the Spirit of Wisdom go with you. Thanks, Kainari. Hopefully Hapasia will feel better soon. We're off then. Woohoo! Okay. So now, Caravan Rebot. Wait, let's find out that this is the correct one. We need to unlock the, the boss. Okay. Okay, so it's here in Sumeru. Here. So, just past this wall is the desert, huh? Oh, wow. Paima remembers hearing people call this the Wall of Samiel. It's made to block sandstorms from the outside. Oh, if it's this tall, it's gotta be the divine work of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, right? Awesome. Enough gawking. Come on, follow me. Hey, I told you I'll hide them, right? So basically, I was wrong. I was thinking that this guy was the one that was considered the outcast, but it's actually the doctor who's considered the outcast, right? So, but I'll hide them this year. Cool. Where did you come from? <laughs> Over here. Oh, he's up that way. Let's hurry up and follow him. Wonder what he's up to. Where did she go? Hey. Uh, how did we lose them? They were just here a second ago. More Aramite mercenaries? Who are they working for this time? Uh, anyway, Traveler, it seems like we were being followed again. You were too careless. You should have noticed those hopeless amateurs trailing you a long time ago. Oops. Thanks, I'll hide them. We couldn't have shaken them without you. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. I've never cared to keep track of personal favors. All I did was correct a mistake I happened to come across. It's a habit I developed at the Academia. You really gave Paimon a scare, I'll hate them. We never thought we'd run into you here. Last time we met at Port Ormos, didn't you say you were going back to the Academia? <gasps> Wait, don't tell Paimon that you're here to take us back on their orders! Oh, <laughs> so you've already landed yourselves on the Academia's hit list. <laughs> I can't say that I didn't expect it. However, had I wished to turn you over to the Academia, don't you think you'd already be the Eremite's honored guests by now? Right, um, you do have a point. <laughs> yeah, you participate in the stage's big project? Mm -hmm. I have no interest in running errands for that project. As a scholar, I've always belonged to the camp that promotes researcher autonomy. <sighs> and these days, you're more fascinating than anything the sages can offer. You're looking for me? Hmm, <laughs> not quite. Ah. To tell you the truth, I'm still investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Unfortunately, I've run into some difficulties. Everyone says the capsule originated in the desert and was eventually moved to Port Ormos. If I am to get to the bottom of this, I must understand how the capsule first came to be. Which brings me back to you and why you're so interesting. The leader of Ainul Ahmar used the Divine Knowledge Capsule right in front of you. And upon seeing him, your expression became perplexed, and you were lost in thought for quite some time. 
To have that kind of reaction, I think you must have realized something. Are you interested at all in sharing what you've been hiding from me? Not really. Wait, what is it? It must be because I was so shocked to hear those words again. World forget me. Oh yeah, that one, yes. Oh, hey, Foom. You really have a ridiculous eye for detail. What kind of person even notices or remembers stuff like that? The situation is a little complicated. I can't share what I know just yet. So that's your answer. Ah! <laughs> well, I do work for the Academia after all. So considering that, it is indeed wise to keep your cards close to your chest. But that does prove you do have some undisclosed information about the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Am I right? <sighs> no matter. Rather than simply learning the answers from you, I'd still prefer to investigate on my own. Speaking of, you two are also headed to the desert? That's right! We have the same plan as you! But we don't really have any concrete goals at the moment. Then I'd suggest starting with Aru Village. It's the largest settlement in the desert, so it'll probably have more resources and intel than anywhere else. Well, would you like to head there together? Alright, let's go. It's always better to travel with someone you know. Let's go! I don't know where that is, so might as well. Not... Okay, L3. Oh. Well, good that I've unlocked it already. Before us lies Aru Village, the safe haven of the desert folk. Whoa, this landscape is really something else. What a cool place! Let's go check it out! Wow! I love these cup cuts. <sighs> Who's that? Uh oh, Sido. Why are you attacking us for no reason? Such a cool character. I didn't pull for him either. Unless my memory fails me, we have barely spoken two words to each other before now at the Academia. Would you care to enlighten me as to when and how I invited the General Mahamacha's wrath? <laughs> oh, Haytham. Do not think you can escape my judgment just because you managed to escape my attack. <laughs> Judgment? So that's how you'd characterize your actions here, is it? Or would elimination perhaps be a more accurate description? <laughs> Had I used my full strength, not even this traveler would have been able to stop me. Though that? styled like an assassination, I sought only to ensure that my target would be unable to flee or resist. Standard practice for the Matra, as well you know. Seemed to me more like your own personal touch. Mahamatra? Yes. General Mahamatra Sino. Head of all the Matra at the Academia. He's a formidable hunter, and the ultimate nightmare for any who have committed academic crimes. You seem to have placed a lot of trust in Al Haytham, to the point of blocking an attack for him. If I were you, I'd never choose to side with him. I wouldn't believe a single word that comes out of his mouth. I have been pursuing this scribe for a long time. I urge you, stand back and do not seek to defend him any longer. Otherwise, there will be consequences. I don't trust him as much as you seem to think. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stand by and do nothing. Ah, nice. Has Alhatham done something wrong? Paimon doesn't think he's as bad as you've made him out to be. <laughs> I won't waste my breath explaining things. Ah, oh, Haytham. I saw it during our fight. 
Take it out. The divine knowledge capsule you're hiding on your person. Unless you want me to retrieve it for myself. Hmm. <laughs> Very perceptive of you. Nothing escapes a mantra's senses. Wait! The divine knowledge capsule? Didn't it fall into the mantra's hands in Port Ormos? Mm, yeah, he did lie. He gave him a fake one. No wonder you speak with such confidence, Sino. But I must admit, I'm very curious. What does this capsule mean to you? And why, as General Mahamatra of the Academia, are you all alone in the desert? As far as I'm aware, the other mantra have been speculating about your disappearance. Have you been given a mission that's, let's say, morally dubious? If I was the real target of your mission, what was stopping you from simply using your authority and resources to judge me within the walls of the Academia? from the sages. I should have known you'd be difficult to deal with. You two! Ugh. What should we do, Traveler? Paimon feels like we can't trust either of them! Ahem. <clears throat> well, look at you two, acting all tough and self-righteous over there. Ah, Dia! Wait, Dia? You gotta help us out here, otherwise these two are gonna start fighting again! Yeah, sure looks that way. Two giants from the Academia duking it out once and for all. Not something you get to see every day, that's for sure. Listen, I know you academic types love to fill up your big brains with self-righteous morality and lord your empty rules and virtues over each other. But how dare you bring your petty disputes into the safe haven of Aru Village? It seems like someone's gonna have to beat some sense into your thick skulls until you finally learn to respect these grounds. <sighs> more fight, more fight! <sighs> fight teams are cool. Neither of them can afford to be distracted by Dia. They're still looking for an opportunity to attack. Hey, did either of you hear a word I just said? Not really. <sighs> Another sandstorm? What's up with these recently? Hey! All of you, over here, quickly! Lena. We have to take cover! Oh no, Candace. Someone's calling for us! Oh, this wind is too strong! Let's get over there! That sounded like Candace. Uh, come on, you two! Jeez, are all of you academia folks such hard work? Move it! <laughs> all right, stop yelling. <laughs> 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 Funny. They all have such interesting eye colors, huh? Wanna play sardines with three people who wanna tear each other limb from limb? <laughs> sure, why not? Sounds fun. Play sardines. Hey, Pow Pow, how was your dinner? <laughs> uh, the air is so thick and heavy. Paimon can hardly keep floating anymore. Oh, the air is so thick and heavy. Paimon can't like, keep floating anymore. That's so funny. <laughs> what do you have, Pow Pow? My sincere apologies, everyone. This is the home of our village chief. I will have to ask you to make do with this small room until the sandstorm dies down. Please, let me introduce myself. I am Candace, protector of Aru Village. Oh man, I can't help to, like, their eyes are also very unique. <laughs> For Subaru, all the eyes are very unique. 
Chicken wings, tomatoes, and eggs, and some vegetable. Nice. I assume that's vegetable. Very nice. Ha! Our savior has come at last! Nice to meet you, Candace. The name's Paimon. Thank you so much for helping us. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. It's only right to help each other when the weather gets rough. So wow, she's so gentle and caring, like a nice older sister. Unlike those guys over there. Vegetable, vegetable. I mean, sure, we can call it that too. Yeah. Or veg, either way. All right. Now that we're all better acquainted, we should return to the topic at hand. As a guardian charged with the responsibility to protect my fellow villagers from harm, I was observing your conflict from afar, even before the sandstorm started. And now that you have set foot within our village itself, it is all the more my responsibility to make absolutely sure that you pose no threat whatsoever to us. So please, have an honest and sincere conversation with one another, and put your hostile feelings to rest. If anyone dares to start anything again while they are under this roof, I will not hesitate to send them out for some quality time with the creatures of the Sandstorm. What's oh, her role here? Uh, on second thought, Paimon may have misjudged Candace's character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who is she supposed and to be? And that goes for you too, Miss Dia. I, I can't. Do I make myself clear? I, I can. <sighs> All right, we got it, Candace. <laughs> you can go now, bye. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, which of you will begin? Oh, okay, never mind. Apparently she's gonna stay here while we talk it out. She <laughs> I thought she was gonna exit the room. I was supposed to be a mediator, but uh, I might have gotten a little too involved just now. Anyway, one of those two should probably start talking. Wait, that was you trying to be a mediator? <laughs> <sighs> I have nothing to hide, so there's no shame in explaining myself. While all Haytham wasn't wrong about the other Matra not knowing my whereabouts, it's not because I've been assigned a morally dubious mission. Rather, I've chosen to exile myself. Huh? Exile yourself? A little while ago, I discovered that there was data missing in the Academia's project planning and development files. What little they did report clearly did not match the project's actual progress. As General Mahamatra, I had the responsibility and authority to request an audit. However, to my surprise, the person responsible for the erroneous data was none other than Grand Sage Azar himself. I tried to investigate the issue myself before submitting a formal audit request, but I soon found that all leads and potential pieces of incriminating evidence were carefully concealed from me. I began to realize that they were cautious of me from the very beginning. Unsurprisingly, the Grand Sage rejected my audit request as soon as the submission reached his desk. He even said to me, The power of the General Mahamatra is granted by the Sages. You have no right to judge us. Hmm. So they really are up to no good. Yep. I realized then that to the Grand Sage, the Matra are nothing more than tools for the Sages to assert and maintain their control over knowledge. The vows that we took, the principles that we strive to uphold, they are meaningless to the Academia of today. So you then decided to exile yourself? I believed it would be wise to flee the Academia before the Sages had a chance to take action against me. Good point. This way, they can no longer see nor predict my actions. I will never give up on this investigation. There's no need for someone else to give me power or authority. Once I find the truth, I will administer judgment by my own name. Sino seems to have the same goal as us. We're all investigating the Sages. Plus, now that he's no longer the General Mahamatra, he somehow feels a lot less scary. <laughs> it's so 
still too early to trust him completely. What if that whole story was just made up? Well, Sino, if that's your story, then why did you see all hate them as a target? When I was investigating the matter in the academia, I overheard a conversation between all Haytham and a sage. The sages asked you to investigate a blonde-haired traveler. Do you dispute this, all Haytham? What? Like many parts of the project, this assignment was undocumented. Now throw in your suspicious behavior with the Divine Knowledge Capsule, and I think we deserve an explanation. Yeah, from the very beginning, all Haytham was. The sages were watching me from the very beginning. Let us know. Hmm. <laughs> yes. I was indeed tasked with investigating the Traveler. Oh, Bye. After all, the promised reward was so great that hardly any scholar could have refused. The Sage told me, once you've completed this assignment, I can give you a glimpse of divine knowledge. Well, did they? A most enticing offer. Unfortunately, those academics don't know me at all. Their words contained one key piece of information, namely that divine knowledge indeed exists. That gave me all I needed to know. From my perspective, the sages are far from trustworthy. Think about it. Isn't it a little strange they're so willing to share divine knowledge with anyone, even as a reward? So, I began my own investigation following the lead of the Divine Knowledge Capsule. In the end, I realized my wisdom in committing to this rather than collaborating with the Sages. Had I been less guarded, I probably would have ended up like that Ainul Ahmar mercenary, incapable of remaining sane for long enough to hold a conversation. You mean... that the Sages originally planned to dispose of you, using one of those capsules that drive people insane? Whoa... What about your encounter with me? Did you join forces with me just so you could investigate me? Yeah, I would like to know. I'd already given up on the assignment by then. Oh. I only told the Academia I was waiting in Port Ormos for you to appear so they wouldn't suspect anything. So it came as quite a surprise when I encountered my erstwhile target while investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Criminals do love to talk about coincidences. <laughs> Even though I ran into the Traveler by chance, I had no intention of providing assistance to the Academia. Also, you should remember, you were the ones who decided to follow me and strike up a conversation after I left that tavern. Now that you mention it, things did go like that. Is that enough to prove his innocence? Hmm. That's true. Alhatham helped us out at Caravan Rebot as well. Maybe he's telling the truth. I'm willing to apologize, if that's worth anything to you. I took the Divine Knowledge Capsule behind your back because I judged its existence to be a significant risk. I felt that it would be best for no one to interact with it before it had been properly studied. <laughs> After all, curiosity often proves to be the most dangerous thing in this land. You should be well aware, Scribe Alhatham, that curiosity can also lead you to danger and suspicion. Answer me this. Did the Sages share any information about their project with you? Have I not made myself clear? You and I are both distrusted by the Academia. Do you really think they would tell me anything? Fine. Although you haven't completely proven your innocence, I won't regard you as an enemy, for now. As you wish. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm glad to see you two clearing up your misunderstandings. And now you, Dia. I believe it's your turn. <laughs> oh, sorry. Whatever the boys were talking about must have been so boring that I spaced out. <clears throat> My situation is pretty straightforward. My employer, Dunyarzad of the Homiyani family, is friends with the Traveler and is currently recovering from her illness at home. I had nothing going on, so I decided to return to Aru Village for a visit. I was actually looking forward to a pretty exciting time getting back together with everyone here. But then I saw these two random guys in the middle of a pointless argument. It ticked me off, and things went downhill from there. Is that all? Well, I will admit that definitely sounds like your style. In that case, 
Welcome back, dear. That's more like it. I missed you all so much, Candace. Oh. What was that? Whoa! What was that sound? The monster. No need to worry. Now that you're no longer at each other's throats, please make yourselves at home. I'll take a quick trip outside to clear out some of those creatures in the sandstorm. Oh, cool. C creatures? In the sandstorm? Uh, are you sure you don't want some backup? Fighting in a sandstorm is not for the faint-hearted. Anyone without extensive training in these conditions is at a disadvantage. You needn't worry. Yeah, just leave them to Candace. <laughs> Don't worry, she's as tough as they come. She doesn't even volunteer to help. <laughs> she's just like, oh yeah, just go ahead and do it yourself. The wind's died down. That means the sandstorm's over, right? Candace still isn't back yet, though. Is she alright? Maybe we should go out and check on her. When you put it that way, even I'm starting to feel a little worried. All right, let's go. We've been here long enough, and the boys are as chatty as the floor. Nah, <laughs> chatty as the floor. <laughs> okay, check the situation outside. Here goes. What kind of creature do we see outside? Supposedly, we need to finish Act 5 to unlock Scaramouche. Oh my goodness, we're only in Act 3. I don't think we can finish it today. Look at this. So... Okay, how do I get there? Wait, is that where I'm supposed to go? Or over here? I'm confused. What, what, what's the line over there? Okay, well, whatever. I'll just follow this one. We'll see what happens. Hello, Candace. Oh, Candace, oh, you're that? still fighting? You've been out here dealing with these creatures the entire time? Yes. They just keep coming in waves. I've lost count of how many I've defeated. Before I realized it, even the sandstorm had stopped. Not only is she strong, her stamina is also something else. Hey! Oh, I see. The dog goes. Leave this round to us. I got interrupted earlier, but now I have something to take my anger out on. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've seen the flame main in action. I'll leave these to you then. Okay. I'll Let's be sure try. to put on a good show. <laughs> Let's go! I didn't volunteer. What? Gather. Okay, this doesn't do anything, but... Quietly now. Here comes the catch. Here comes another wave. When are they ever gonna let up? E. The creature stopped appearing. Was that the last of them? What we fought just now was probably the aftermath of the sandstorm. So we should be safe for the time being. I didn't know well that everyone. Here. No injuries, I hope. Huh? Who are you? Ah, my apologies. I haven't had a chance to greet you yet. I had my hands full taking care of the village's elderly and children. I am the chief of Aru Village. Everyone usually calls me Uncle Anpu. Uncle Anpu, so cute. Sir, I am also originally from the desert, but I have not been back for some time now. May I ask if such sandstorms are common? I can't say they've always been common, uh, but recently the storms have become increasingly severe and frequent. Besides sandstorms, we also occasionally get earthquakes. Uh, according to an investigator who stayed in the village a while ago, these unusual natural phenomena are related to the withering of Ermensol. Hmm. Another effect of Ermensol's weathering. So, 
Erminsel's withering causes withering zones in the forest, and sandstorms and earthquakes here in the desert? Everything in the natural world is inextricably connected to Erminsel. These regional symptoms can indeed be a reflection of Erminsel's present state. <sighs> Everyone in Aru Village needs to take good care of themselves. Uh, speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single village keeper since I got here? Village keeper? Who are they? Village guards like Candace? Does your guard. curiosity know no bounds? Village keeper is how Aru Village refers to mad scholars exiled here by the academia. Most of them are scholars who lost their sanity after a period of training in the Avidia forest. Oh, they literally mean mad like crazy, I see. Okay. The academia believes that their crazed mutterings may have a negative effect on the psyches of other scholars. So, they're forcibly exiled to the desert. Though if you ask me, it's all a boatload of nonsense. Hmm, Kignar also brought this up before. Hypatia was also nearly exiled to the desert. Oh yeah! Alas, that's exactly what we've been trying to investigate. One by one, the village keepers have been mysteriously disappearing without a trace. But no one in the village has ever seen them leave. If you're planning to stay around the village for the next few days, I'd appreciate it if you could keep an eye out for them. I've had encounters with those people in the past. I'll see what I can do to help. The Matra are the ones responsible for their exile. Now that you're no longer with them, are you trying to alleviate your guilt and atone for your past sins? <laughs> I'm fascinated by how you think. <laughs> Mock me if you will. But if you are guilty, I will eliminate you, regardless of my position or identity. Oh, you're the former General Mahamatra. You must be an expert in these kinds of investigations. Thank you for your help. She, he exiled himself, meaning that he's the former general. I see. I see. Is it because you're reminded of Hapasia? Oh, these poor scholars. First they lose their sanity, now this! We need to help get them back home, safe and sound. But, uh, is it really a good idea to tag along with Sino? You seem like you really don't trust him. That's why this is a great opportunity to watch him. It'll be fine. He and the others are here too. I'll be grateful for the assistance. <laughs> no doubt you will do a better job than some of my former subordinates. Let's start by finding a spot to share what we know so far. Oh, a huddle. Okay, let's go exchange information in that spot right there. So, let's climb up. Hopefully it's just right here. Oh, there it is. Although I've sent myself into exile, I'm still doing essentially the same things as before. Do you still have any questions for me before we start our investigation? Just without pay, ha! <laughs> Why do you refer to the mad scholars as village keepers? One of my former subordinates told me that this title has its origins in a strange incident. The academia has long exiled mad scholars to Aru village. A mysterious phenomenon exists here. When mad scholars first arrive, they are as incoherent and deranged as before. But after spending some time here, they invariably begin to calm down. Initially, the people of Aru village greatly resented having to take in the mad scholars. But a strange incident one night changed that. Aru village was struck by the strongest earthquake in living memory. Seeing buildings on the verge of collapse all around him, the then chief of the village was preparing to take everyone to safety. Suddenly, he noticed a mad scholar crouching in a corner, caressing the ground with his hands. A soft green light radiated from him, like a divine glow against the backdrop of night. 
Despite the powerful tremors that ripped through the ground that night, all the houses remained upright, almost as if they had grown roots reaching deep into the ground. In the end, not a single building collapsed, and no one was hurt. Phew! Survived it. Of course, I have so many t lines I lost interest in it. Oh no. Uh, which quest, though? Are we talking about, like, the side quest? Because then, yeah, I don't even read those. Unless you're talking about the main quest, then... What? You just have to listen and watch. Everything? Oh, no! Are you going to be playing, um... Star Rail? Honkai? Honkai Star Rail? What's the other one that's coming out? I asked you that before, actually. You said no to that one, I think. After that, the people of Aru Village treated the mad scholars with greater kindness and began to refer to them as the village keepers. The soft green light? A mad scholar protecting Aru Village? Hmm. What do you make of it, Traveler? Oh, you're pre registered for Star Rail? I don't think I'll be playing that for long. Yeah. Yeah, it's turn based, so I. and, and sci fi, so. <laughs> I mean, the characters look great, though. But other than that, uh... There's also Wuthering Waves that's coming out, uh, along with... What, what is that other one? Uh, that's coming out really, 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 really soon. Oh, uh, yeah. And you, you stop playing, what's the other one? The Genshin kind of the Tower of Fantasy, right? You, did you try to pick that up again, or you just stopped since then? Well, Lina, you oh, I don't think so too. Actually, Sino, do you know if any of the Mad Scholars continued to wear their Akasha terminals at Aru Village? In theory, they would continue wearing them so the Academia could still monitor their activities. With that said. The main Akasha system would no longer have any interaction with them. Oh, no wonder! Everything makes sense then! Add in the fact that they calmed down, it was probably Nahida who calmed them. Oh, so when they say the crazy ones, you mean the ones that Dottore was experimenting on. Right? The one where they can automatically download their subconscious up into the cloud or upload their subconscious into the cloud either way that's that's the one they were talking about that one that was cheering earlier if you are able to draw a conclusion from this one story alone then it appears you possess much more information than i do <laughs> so what do you make of the story that mad scholar's power likely came from lesser lord kusanali lesser lord kusanali was actually the one who protected the village yeah really Lesser Lord Kusanali. I don't know why we're giving that information away. What? You don't believe us? Lesser Lord Kusanali was definitely using the Akasha to give her power to the Mad Scholars! No, it's not so much that I don't believe you. I'm just struck by your reasoning. Lesser Lord Kusanali, the current Dendro Archon, is she really active in Sumeru? The Academia has always placed far greater importance on the late Greater Lord Ruka Devata. They've more or less ignored Lesser Lord Kusanali, and I've never had any reason to doubt their views. In addition, I've never heard any stories about Lesser Lord Kusanali and her deeds. To me, she might as well have been a god that never existed. No way! Nahida no. definitely exists! She's a... How should Paimon put it? She's a good Archon who's kind and wise. Even if she says weird stuff sometimes. <laughs> Paimon. <laughs> oh, what are these days you'll be doing, Karimid, runs on your own? Yeah, I think we're still a, a while away, though, because we're only in Act 3, and I did read that it we have to finish Act 5, so soon enough, but that is not today. I will still need to do Skaramouche with you today, though. If you don't mind, huh? The time is nigh. Yeah, I, I was reading it and it said that it was released, the article was released in November 2022, and I was like, 
Has it been that long? <laughs> Wait, has it been that long? Jeez. I've just been jumping into other people's world every week just to get the Scaramouche done. Jones saved me once not long ago. We saved Sumeru City together in not so distant past. Yes, we did. I've spent many years interrogating criminals, so I can easily tell when someone is lying. And we're not. Good! Then you should know that we're telling the truth! That look in your eyes. <laughs> I've never seen that from a liar. <laughs> you two really must have met Lesser Lord Kusanali. How can this be? We're friends. To think, our Archon has been amongst us this entire time. All right, now it's our turn to put our skills to good use for this investigation. Yeah, you betcha. But easier said than done, especially since we don't have any leads. Hmm. Maybe we can start by knocking on some doors. Really? I guess. Excuse me, are you here to help me find my grandpa? Uh, yes. Huh? <laughs> Who are you? We will always say yes. By the sounds of it. A resident of this village. My name is Isaac. You'll help me find my grandpa, right? Isaac. Is your grandpa a mad scholar? Hey, don't say that. Grandpa is just grandpa. Why do you have to call him that? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. <sighs> the person you're referring to is not a local. Yet you are. Why do you call him Grandpa? Grandpa is just Grandpa. He's my family. Ah, uh, kids are so cute. Uh, I heard everything you said to the village chief. Please, you gotta take me with you. Uh, I wanna find my Grandpa. Uh, I swear I'll help. I won't be a nuisance. Ah, so you're the one who was eavesdropping on us around the village chief's house. I was planning to go out and take care of whoever it was, but I had a vague feeling that they didn't harbor any ill intent. Whoa! Oh, Hazen wasn't kidding about Matra having sharp senses. Sino, he's just a kid! All he wants is to find his grandpa! Let's find a way to help him! Sorry, I was only listening in because I wanted to know where Grandpa went. Honest. If you don't believe me, you can ask Miss Candace. <laughs> Candace knew you, he was here all along. All right. But first, let's confirm the facts with Candace. Hey, Pao, you want to do the uh, Star Mush now or later? to see yeah I was like I'm not capped yet oh it's above us somewhere oh no what okay well I guess we can teleport and see if we can bump into the diamond higher 16 meters that's better Oh. Wait, what? Where? Is King Deshrep really gonna come back from the dead? Oh, in through the door. Sino is super vigilant. Is this what all the Matra are like? Ah, you're back already. We just wanted to confirm something with you. Do you know a boy by the name of Isak? <laughs> I had a feeling he'd go looking for you. Huh? You knew this would happen? Yes. Although he tried his best to stay hidden, I still noticed him eavesdropping outside the window. He really wants to get his grandfather back. Isak's parents were both Aramite mercenaries who rarely returned to the village after finding employment in the city. He was raised by his grandfather. Unfortunately, 
It was only a few years before his grandpa passed away. Isak was still very young at the time, so various families in the village took turns caring for him so he could survive. Later, an elderly mad scholar arrived at the village. Isak thought the scholar bore a striking resemblance to his grandfather, and thus often spied on the man. However, the scholar was unkempt in appearance and incoherent in speech. Although Isak referred to the man as his grandpa, he was afraid and didn't dare to approach him. One summer night, the oft mumbling and bumbling grandpa suddenly calmed down and seemed to become more lucid. He even noticed Isak hiding in the distance. So grandpa walked up to Isak and patted him on the head. He even took Isak to the entrance of the village, where he patiently taught the boy the names of the stars, and accompanied Isak until he fell asleep. The next morning, Isak woke up and wanted to go find his grandpa again, only to realize his grandpa no longer recognized him. However, even so, grandpa retained his calm expression. It's said that those who saw the scholar claimed he no longer appeared to be crazy, but appeared to be living in his own world, almost as if he were sleepwalking. Isak was thrilled that his grandpa was able to find peace and would follow him all the time, asking him things like, Grandpa, want me to take you somewhere fun? Or, Grandpa, could you tell me stories about the stars again? All this somehow just makes Paimon feel really sad. It seems like they both deserve so much better. Perhaps. Nearly everyone who lives in the desert has some form of hardship or regret. But even so, we must still continue on with our lives. It's also my reason for fighting. I must continue to protect this land. Was it? I... Oh, Lucid Grandpa was probably Nahida. She must have sued the other ma mad scholars as well. Oh, okay. That's cool. <sighs> but she can't fix them, though. Sad face. Maybe the people have always had a considerate god watching over them. Huh? What did you say, Sino? <laughs> no, nothing. As long as Esau keeps his word and doesn't get in our way, we can take him along. Perhaps you are more compassionate than I gave you credit for. Please accept my thanks on Esau's behalf, Sino. Let's ask the local residents some questions first. All right. So now, let's do, let's do the event, and then, what is this afterward? Oh, unlocks in three days. Two of them. And then let's just talk about new things I learned this week. Um, I gotta change the sound though. Um, 
It's so per- Where is it? Hey pal, are you ready for Scaramouche? Or later? Alright, Ricky, milk and cookies. <laughs> yeah, such a great snack. I just opened up and oh, okay, then later, later. Yeah, up to you as to when, pal. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, do it right now, alright. Ooh, look at this. Did we finish Act 3? We get some, we get some prizes here. Very good. Let's see how many wishes we have. We got... 317. This is 4 5 stars. 4 5 stars. I have to save it for, for the Fatuis. The Torre looks really cool. And, and, uh... F Fontaine. I wanna save it for Fontaine. So yeah, currently, new job is with breast surgery, plastic surgery, and um, lymphedema clinic, lymphedema clinic, right? So, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, the one that is in plastic surgery and lymphedema clinic uh, is a... is a PA. So that's really cool. I can't really ask her much about surgical PA because it's it's her goal, but she's not she has not made it reality yet. <laughs> so what's interesting about breast surgery is that when they do, you have two kinds, right? If you have breast cancer, you have two two kinds of treatment in terms of surgery. It's lumpectomy, where it's called a partial mastectomy, where they take out just the tumor and you know, preserve the breast, basically. Uh, if it's possible. And uh, total mastectomy is they take out the entire breast, right? And there's also this thing called nipple sparing, which means that they're gonna try to save your nipple. Or they're gonna remove it if the tumor is really close to your nipple. Um, even though men can get breast cancer, it is very rare. It's like, I think the number is like 1 out of 800 people, 800 men. So it's very rare, but it's quite common for women. What I thought before this job was that if you get breast cancer, it's because, you know, it can be genetic, right? But apparently, it's not always the case. And it's quite common, I learned, for people to get breast cancer, even though they don't have the risk features for it and the risk features for it would be I need some planks here the risk features for it is if you one if you're pregnant it, it raises your risk for breast cancer two if you have contraceptives oral contraceptives three or birth control is what you call it three is if you are game had to be forced closed okay you let me know when you're ready pal three is if uh, you had hormone therapy, right? Hormone replacement therapy. Uh, so that means like you're taking estrogen or progesterone, or, you know, with that. Uh, mainly I think it's estrogen because estrogen feeds breast cancer. Uh, and also that is why uh, women who are pregnant, they do get breast cancer. They are they have higher risk of getting breast cancer because your hormones are are elevated, right? And, oh, let me correct myself, sorry. It is actually estrogen and progesterone. Um, if, if your breast cancer is based on those two, if it's hormonal, so it's based on those two uh, hormones. There is a, There are other hormones, but that, that is basically the indication if you need hormone blocking therapy. ER, PR, which means estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor. So those two. 
which is elevated when you're pregnant. So it, it actually is. Also, another thing I think would, the other risk factors is that if you've had abortion, if you how many children you've had, you know, all these kinds of things can add up, add into it. So they're just like questions that you have to ask. Red E. What is Red E? Oh, that is Red E. Okay. <laughs> Pop out. Oh, so funny. Hold on. Let me get my rope and I'll be right there. Thank you so much for your patience. I think. Where? Oh, here it is. I got it. Alright. Okay, let me just get this done. Okay, done. Alright. So now let's go to Pow Pow's world for the boss. Pow Pow. Did you say you're Yelan in C6 already? Or C5? Um, oh, it's L3, except C6 already. Sheesh! Ignore my Yelan, we don't need her. <laughs> we don't need her at all. And there's my belly boy. I am ready. Ooh, switching her out. I see, I see. Yeah, so what I found interesting... Okay, I didn't have any exposure to breast cancer whatsoever, so this was like... Well... Only knowledge I had about it was that my... My grand-aunt had it, right? She died of um, breast cancer, but she didn't seek treatment whatsoever, so she just... She just took painkillers and, you know... <laughs> yeah. It's not what I wanted to do. Boing. So funny how it still does that. So this is quite interesting. So um So typically when you when you get a mastectomy, you know, you can reconstruct the breast, right? Is there anything that where's the diamond that we have to take? There it is. Ah wait, excuse me. L squared. L squared. So you go to a plastic surgeon to reconstruct it, right? And you have a lot of options. One of them is... How do I do this? L. L. Oh, well. Topo, Topo did everything. <laughs> did all the work. Uh, I really... I still don't know how to defeat this boss. I just... I just do these little things. And hope that it actually, like, dies. Yeah. Um... Aim! Interestingly enough, to prepare you for for reconstructive breast reconstructive surgery is that so they remove the cancer, right? So it's basically like you just imagine it's kind of like deflated, <laughs> your breast kind of deflated, and then what happens is that they have to put something inside. It's called a tissue expander, right? A tissue expander. Ooh, Payback time, what's that? I got some kind of uh, thing. That's cool. A tissue expander is what they put saline in so that uh, it expands your tissue, your breast tissue, slowly, right? So if you don't need radiation, then they can do the expansion very slowly. 
like uh, once every two weeks, but if you do need re radiation, depending on how urgent it is. Oh, okay, you got it. How urgent it is, then they could do it like once a week, right? Ah, where's the next one? No, I gotta get up. Okay, R1. All right, here I am. So they're expanded according to the size that you want, right? So if you want it to be like size, whatever size, you know, B, C, D, 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 <laughs> you know, like whatever it is. Uh, what's interesting is that I didn't know size B was considered modest. Doctor's like, oh, so you just want a modest size, size B, and I was like, that's actually the perfect size. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I got a billet. Look at that, a polar billet. <sighs> nice. Cool. Thanks, pal. I haven't gotten a billet for weeks now. Sheesh. Okay, cool. So now, so you put the expander, and what's interesting about the expander, is, as I said, you put saline in, inside, which is like salt water, basically, okay? You put salt water into this thing to expand your, your boobs, okay? Make it bigger. Um, so I'm gonna leave. And what's interesting about it is that it's actually quite uncomfortable. Um, you know, and I imagine it's some kind of pouch that they put inside of your boots and then it, to expand it, right? And it's uncomfortable and you can't sleep on your stomach because you can't press on it. You can't sleep on your side because it's going to poke on you. So, <laughs> so it's a very interesting uh, thing to experience. And so, I need to go to Sumeru to go to my little event right here. Okay. So now once you're done with the, ex the tissue expander, you're at the size that you want, and they try to make it smaller than what you want it to be. Because when they put the... the implants in, it has to be really snug, okay? So it can't be loose, because if it's loose, then it'll dislodge, and it'll move around, <laughs> and you kind of just want it in your boob area, and not like... Uh, you know, somewhere else, basically. So, uh, so they, they, they make it tighter in that regard. Interestingly enough. So we're gonna do Dendro, Electro, Energy, Recharge, and Quicken. Okay, I pretty much know what team we're gonna use for this, maybe. So let's do a party setup. Ooh, they gave me I'll hide them. Okay. And then you gave me... Alright. I mean, that's kinda cool. Um, who else do I need? We need water. I think we're gonna go with Singtail. Yeah, I think this is the team. This is the team we're gonna try. So yeah, and then you do the reconstruction. What, what I didn't know, I didn't know a lot of things, but um, what I didn't know was that it doesn't just take one surgery to do it, right? Because you do it once, and you might have a complaint about like, oh, it's not the size you wanted. Oh, oh, the nipples are not like even, you know, and all of these things. So you have to expect that you might need additional surgery. And so what's interesting is that we have patients who are just like, you know, especially if you're kind of um, older, then you don't really care so much about, you know, these kinds of things. So, for you, you're just like, oh, it's fine. You know. You don't need to do reconstruction surgery. Interestingly enough, it's like, based on your surgeon and how good they are, <laughs> like, there is a... Ooh, yeah, Miko for the wind. It looks good. I don't know how to use any of these characters. I'm just like... <laughs> their, their lives are so minute that everybody dies before I can even like switch out my characters. Let's <laughs> see. Like, what? Okay, okay, okay. I don't even have 
Oh, I was gonna say I don't have enough points, but I think we don't really need. It's it's multiple cycles, you know, so we have enough time. Still didn't want to get him. I initially wanted to get him because he looked really cool, but I don't really know how to play him <laughs> properly, so I was just like, never mind. Oh, that was it? Oh no. Thunder Hydro. Ooh. Okay. And then it becomes Kokomi. Alright. That works too. Whatever, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so you, when you when you get a uh, mastectomy, depending on your surgeon, it, it looks like some of them look really nice. You know, like a total mastectomy, they take out your boobs and everything, so it's like completely flat. But I was expecting that it, it, you have to have a scar. You know, I thought that was that was obvious. That it's gonna be like really obvious that you you know remove your breasts and stuff like that. But I have seen one that's like really flawless, <laughs> and then the surgeon was saying like, "Oh, you know, some of some of the patients want to know what your scar looks like and what your work looks like, right?" And she says, "Oh, I never supply that information. I never give them photos of what it could look like because it's not guaranteed that it's gonna be that way all the time. You know, it depends on the person as to how their healing goes. So she just doesn't give them that information." But, but that scar was so nice. It's like, it's just one line that is so discreet and subtle. I was very impressed. Very impressed by her work. Ooh, there's a new boss somewhere. Ooh, what is this? Hello! It looks like some kind of... I don't know what, I don't know what that was. I'm just using Kokomi. Why we're using Kokomi? Ah! Wee! They're so squishy though. Huh? Like you don't even have to worry about it. Or it's because of the superpower. I didn't even know. I see the superpower down there. Yeah. Let's hold hands! Okay. Yeah, so in that case, I I totally agree with those people who have like a total mastectomy and then just don't do reconstruction because you know, reconstruction is like Sometimes it doesn't come out the way you want it to be, and then you have to like do a lot of visits and all that kind of stuff. But you know, that's just. <laughs> but I understand. Yeah, of course you wanna do reconstruction because you want it. You you don't wanna you know you like cancer took all of this away from you. You know, so yeah, yeah. I'm just saying it's she she does a really good job. That's all. That is all I am saying. So, yeah, there are patients who are just like, nah, I'm fine just like this. I don't need any reconstruction. But at the same time, you know, they're kind of like, <laughs> if you're in your 70s, right? And you're just like, yeah, it's totally fine. But, I mean, there are a lot of people who actually are diagnosed really young. Diagnosed it like, oh, in their thirties, forties, fifties. Usually, it's around there, you know, like fifty-five. You know, um, that's the age that you get diagnosed with it. So, 
very interesting. Woo! What I learned is that actually, um, this plastic surgeon that does the the reconstruct breast reconstructive surgery, um, in the other hospital, he actually does gender reassignment surgery, which is really cool. I hope we can watch that one day. <laughs> I don't actually work with her. I work with her um, physician assistant. So. Maybe maybe um, the physician assistant can connect me with the surgeon, and then maybe I'll be able to like shadow in the OR for that. It's really cool. Really cool idea, I should say. <laughs> I'm at five thousand now. So you can see I don't know what any of these characters do. <laughs> it's like pew 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 woohoohoo Dude Scaramouche is just like a Yanfei. <laughs> His gameplay feels like a Yanfei. That's nice. That is very nice. Okay. Um Yeah, so so how it usually works. I came from radiation therapy, right? So when we dealt with breast cancer, it was always like you you first get a lumpectomy, which is just like it's not a total mastectomy, so you get part of the, just the cancer. You just take out the cancer wherever that is. And then and then when you do that, we have to radiate you because you know, we can't really guarantee that you took away all the cancer, so they still have to radiate you. And also that um, you also need hormone therapy, which blocks your estrogen. And interestingly enough is that it blocks it for five years. There's also research that say that it's better if you do it for 10 years, but at the minimum of five years. And I just like, what? There are all these hormone blocking therapy for like five years minimum up to 10 years. And what the what the side effects of that is like, it's basically the same menopausal side effects, right? So fatigue, um, same as prostate, it's fatigue, it's hot flashes, <laughs> vaginal dryness, and all these kinds of things. Like, oh ho, oh. and then you're, you're there for like five years, and men have to be on hormone therapy for like, you know, a year, two years, and people are already complaining. <laughs> and women, it's like five to ten years. Jeez! And it just stops the cancer from growing and spreading, basically. That's, that's what it is. Same, same as with uh, prostate cancer. So, it is very interesting. I need to go to the loo and get some water, so I'll be right back. And we'll continue this. Where is my BRB screen? I feel like I, I lost my BRB screen for some reason. Uh, oh no, it's up here. Just kidding. Just kidding.
Back with very much for your patience. Okay. So, as I was saying before, why why is it Ayaka and Dia here? Kind of weird, huh? Why why did they pair these two together? I don't understand. What is some kind of melt team or what? Huh? Okay, whatever. It's fine. I don't know what she's supposed to do, but I guess I'll do it that way. I don't think actually Bennett would be helpful, because they're kind of easy to kill. I think we're just gonna use uh, this. Okay, so we actually have patience, it's interesting. Is that, remember when I was talking about how you should always get second opinions and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> because... Everything is just very subjective based on, like, the doctor's expertise and all that kind of stuff as to what the recommendations would be. And, and interestingly enough is that we actually had... Woo! Hey! Let's just play with the, uh... So fun to play, my goodness. She's just punching him. What? <laughs> She's really weak, by the way. But it doesn't really matter here. So we got this patient who actually, like, got three second opinions. And to the point that they confuse themselves and they don't actually know what to do. And so, it, that, that, is, that is something that happens as well. Uh, that, you, that you get so, so much conflicting information that you don't really know, you know, which one to go with. I don't even... I'm not even using this. <laughs> I'm not even using her at all. Kind of like a D look, huh? Like that. Can you annihilate all of them? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's really hard when you don't have a medical background, scientific background, and you just like talking to people or doctors who are not very good at educating, you know. And that's what I found out about, like, uh, the breast surgeon I work with is just, she's not very good at explaining things, and it's not very helpful for patients, you know. And when I say that, I mean, like, she's a surgeon, so she kind of just speeds through things, and, and the way she, she was answering Questions was kind of condescending to me. I felt like it was very condescending. <laughs> she was just like, well, well, yes, you know, that is how it works. That is what pathology is. Of course, it's that. And, you know, all these kinds of things. And it's just, wow. I felt bad for the patients. I really did. <laughs> but then she redeemed herself after, so it's okay. You know, when she came back, she, she went to the radiologist, got more information about you know, their cancer and all that stuff, so that she could give them, like, 
uh, better advice and all that. But at the beginning of that uh, appointment, the pages were just like, I'm really confused. <laughs> and then she goes, how about you? It, it says to the patient, and it's like, how about you? You're not confused, are you? And she's like, yeah, I am. I'm lost, actually. And then she goes and cuts them and says, you're not lost. <laughs> you just like know what's going on. No, no, I am actually lost. You know, it's like, oh my goodness, that was horrible. That was such a horrible experience. Like, if you could imagine, that was that was your first appointment with with a doctor, and you have you have cancer, and the way they explain to you is just like, this is what we're gonna do. Uh, you know, because obviously that's that's how it is. This is how we're gonna treat you. This is how we're gonna cure you, and just like. Not much explanation to it. <laughs> uh, this is horrible. Oh, I think I was supposed to use my skills. I did not. Not really. I don't know how to do this jump thing. Like, a Hu Tao jump thing. I find the lead. This is why I don't have Hu Tao. I didn't really like her when she came out, and I still don't like playing her now. Hmm. I lost it! I lost my meteor! Ooh! I always wanted to play you two together. Um... I don't know. We'll do that. Do, 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 do. And then we'll do... We'll do this. This sounds nice. And so, um, what what tends to happen in this clip in this um, healthcare office is that the patient is the new patient is first seen by the physician assistant slash nurse practitioner, depending on who the doctor has, and then they go over the basics of you know uh, your cancer, what it is, what options you have, and all these kind of things. And then then the breast surgeon is gonna come in and say, hey. This is what it is. Um, this is what your imaging shows, and because of that, we're gonna do this this treatment plan, you know, and and all these kinds of things. So for this week, we didn't actually have the physician assistant. She was out, you know, because she was, she's on vacation. So we didn't really have have a person to talk to the patients like that so it was all up to the, the surgeon to actually do the new patient visit and I was very excited thinking that she actually has a speech because I haven't heard her speech yet usually um, doctors have speeches based on your diagnosis what they're going to do and you know and explain to you why that what the thought process is as to why they're recommending that and what your other options are yada 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 which she doesn't do uh, the the PA the PA nurse practitioner they do that so I was excited to hear the doctor's version of that speech and lo and behold this week happened and she was seeing the new patients <laughs> just by herself and yet there was no speech to be found no? it was like nothing happened at all that there's nobody missing in the first part of this this visit, you know? <laughs> uh, the PA didn't do it because they're not here, and she didn't do it, so... It's gonna, like, you should just imagine how how the, the patients feel, right? They're kind of lost. <laughs> it just goes in there, well, this is what your imaging shows, and this is what we're gonna do, and that's it. Yeah. But what does this really mean, and, you know, oh, do we have any other options, and... What if we we don't want that and all the kind of stuff? It's like, she's just nope. This is this is the only option. This is what we're gonna do, and you know, <laughs> it's been, she's been doing it for twenty years. So, you know, and she's a sh surgeon. So that's that's basically uh, how it is with surgeons, right? They're not very. Uh, they don't spend much time with you to explain. I mean, she, she's good. She's really nice. She's very friendly. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like based on, you know, compared to my other doctor, he spends a lot more time 
with every patient, you know, <laughs> like just him because it's his clinic and he doesn't have any anybody else helping him. Like he doesn't have a physician assistant and nurse practitioner to do everything. So he has his whole, whole speech uh, walking the patient through from the moment of diagnosis as to why you're diagnosed with that and what you're diagnosed with, what your options are from like if this is uh, a simple cancer, like it's benign until you know, it's stage four kind of thing, right? Metastatic and all that kind of stuff. So he goes through all those stages with you and what your options are for them. So it's very, it's very helpful in terms of learning. Uh, but that is not like that in breast surgery. <laughs> basically, basically what I'm saying, it's not like that in breast surgery. What is this? Oh yeah, they changed the emblem for the pyro. That's right. I was surprised by that. I was like, hey, I've never seen that emblem before. Um, and, and this week, I also sh um, shadowed uh, medical oncology, which is my first time as well, right? Like, I am aware of, you know, uh, the chemos, the, the hormone therapy and all that kind of stuff based on uh, the radiation therapy perspective. And what I, you know, and when I read their medical oncology notes, so I was kind of like familiar with the terms and stuff, but not so much with the thought process of how they're doing it. Based, you know, outside of the the basics. <laughs> oh, basically, we just have to, to use to use the medication, the chemo, as for as long as they work, and then we have to switch out when they stop working, right? And and so we had a patient who was like, um, her chemo, she was expecting it to work longer than it did okay she she just changed her chemo like a month ago and she was expecting that it would work longer so uh, based on the radiation their uh radiation oncologist uh, that i asked before he's saying like the expectation hopefully like you know when you're trying to be optimistic hopefully your medication will last for at least like a year and a half right but that's that's really based on uh, your body and the cancer and how um how they're because cats are smart you know when you try to block something they'll figure out another route to get their food to get get their spreading going on and all that kind of stuff so that's why you know chemo is a systemic treatment where you're trying to kill the cancer uh in a in a like this is war kind of way <laughs> you know instead of instead of uh, radiation which is very targeted like i know where the cancer is and i can target that spot and i can eliminate that spot right there right but but in chemo it's like well it's all over the place and so we don't have one single target we have multiple targets so this is what we're gonna do um clinician and yeah so from from medical oncology's perspective it's very interesting uh, and, and she was like, well, it's not really an exact science what she was telling the patient and we don't have a crystal ball So we don't really know what like chemo agent would work best um, And and what we know based on the study and based on you know statistically speaking uh, For patients who present with your your type of disease and stuff like that This is the next step. This is the next agent that we should try because it's the most successful that we have, we have, you know, seen and and done and all that kind of stuff. But to pick between the two agents as to which one you should go with, that's kind of like it's just based on you and what you feel like you want to go with, right? Uh, So, so they, they like to say, you know, this is what I would favor, this is what I would recommend, but the other one is also a reasonable choice if, you know, you have a problem with this agent and you prefer to use the other agent, you know, they, they basically both will do the job well, <laughs> you know, it's just that for this particular one, they're like, well, we already tried a, a cousin drug of that agent. So that's why they're favoring the other agent that you have tried before because the one that the new one is also the, is a cousin drug of the one that you tried prior to that one. So so it's kind of similar, right? And we know that your failure, your chemo failure, basically like um, the chemo agent that you've used before uh, could not control the cancer anymore. 
and the age the mechanism they're using for that chemo is similar to the new one that we're suggesting now or you know recommending now uh, and so the likelihood of it not working as well is kind of higher than the other agent that we favor right now right so you have that choice <laughs> depending on who you want to listen to you either listen to your med- medical oncologist or you just go like well you know based on why would I try something that I've tried before as well, you know, and since we, there was a reason why we switched out of that before and all these kinds of things. So it's a very long conversation and it's just, doctors will always say, well, it's up to the patient, this is what they want to do, because ultimately they're the boss, you know, that's <laughs> uh, the argument that we will make as patients is that, hello, I am coming to you because you're the, you're the expert and you're supposed to tell me and, you know, what the best option is. But then they will say, well, you know, best is a subjective word. <laughs> best in what regard? You know, best in terms of quality of life or best in terms of, you know, longevity or best in terms of controlling cancer. <laughs> you know, it's like all these kinds of things. This is very interesting. So, uh, what you learn in the medical field is that you always think that it's very uh, a hard science, but it's actually very nuanced and dependent. It depends on the patient, basically how they're going to respond to these kinds of medication and treatment and stuff like that. So it's all very interesting. Uh, I think this is all we have this week. Let me see. Uh, I think it's been three hours. Am I right? <laughs> three hours and 21 minutes. I believe that I've been, I've been live for that long. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. I saw that you you left a, a comment and uh, on the new video, Ricky. Thank you so much for that. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna put in a link of that one. I will respond to your your comment later once I'm off stream. But let's put on that that new video I just posted. The next one I'm working on is about. I, uh, get a shareable link. Okay. Let's post it on here. Thank you. Glad you enjoyed it, Ricky. So this is, this video is about, okay, you don't see anything, but <laughs> that video is about how, you know, there's this thing in society where we like to compare ourselves with others and me, especially with like, uh, that was the thing that I struggled with a lot because I was always the type of person who wants to be on track in life, right? Like, you have this idea, if you are on track earlier, then your end of life would be better, but, you know, life doesn't really turn out that way and doesn't actually go as planned, but... So, <laughs> so for me, it didn't really go as planned, right? Even though I, I was on track, like, I spent four years in high school, four years in college, you know, you graduate with a degree, thinking that you're gonna go to grad school immediately and then just like <laughs> you change your routes and stuff like that so so for me that was a huge deal uh feeling like i was behind that everybody else was ahead that they are successful more successful because you know they did their life right you know and i somehow got didn't do it you know perfectly according to what i wanted to do because you know life happens things happen and then you just have to adjust accordingly, right? And, and so, yeah, that that is that is why I, I made this video and sharing uh, how I was able to overcome all that. Um, and that it's it's all about a journey. It's all to be okay, and that God has a plan for you that's better than your plan, and uh, you're gonna be fine. What's interesting about this? Actually, I didn't mention it in the video. Uh, Ricky, if you remember, Peter was asking about John, which is Jesus' beloved, right? And and he was like, well, what about him? What What is he going to do, right? When, when Jesus said, hey, do this. And so when, when Peter said that, Jesus said this, actually. Maybe I should have mentioned it. That's really cool, actually. Jesus said, if I want him to live forever, what is it to you? Right, and that is huge in this in this thing. Um, 
Yeah, somebody left a comment on my video. Uh, uh, it's the sin video, and they were like, well, if you could actually add more um, biblical things into it, then that would be more helpful, right? The more theology, which, as I said, I'm not a theologian. But, uh, yeah, I thought I could mention more about, like, Bible stuff. Um, but I didn't in that one. So, so that that is what it is. It's like what Jesus is saying is that what I told you to do is what you should do because that is my plan for you. And you don't have to worry yourself about other people's lives and what my plan for them is, right? And in society nowadays with social media and everything, everybody is too much into everybody's business and what they're doing. And you're just like, you get caught up in that and you compare yourself with other people and you're like, but you know, they're doing that. And, and I am so far behind and I could have been doing that if I did this right and if this didn't happen. And so you, you get into the mindset of regret and doubt and, you know, all the kind of stuff. But overall, the message is there. God's plan for your life is more magnificent than whatever you can come up with for yourself. And his plan for other people's lives is way different than his plan for your life. You know, because he prepares them differently than he prepares you too. So, you know, all these kinds of things. Check that video out if you'd like. And leave a comment and a like if you like. Uh, if you enjoy it. And uh, I'm going to work on the new video, which is going to be something that I... It was, was basically what, what God told me was... I would call it the sin. <laughs> I would call it a sin. It's like a sin that I struggle with. I struggle with this present tense. This one I haven't overcome yet because I, it's just been revealed to me that this is something that I actually do a lot of, which is um, very in tune with the woke culture of today where we are very, or even like Marvel movies, I would say, you know, like good versus evil. So I, I've been caught in the idea of Evil should be punished. Justice must be served. And if something bad befalls a person who I deem as evil, right, then it's justified. And you kind of relish in that idea, right? And you're like, well, serves you right because you are a bad person and you deserve everything bad that comes to you. And that is kind of like cursing your enemies. <laughs> And, and I was like, yeah, I, I have a tendency of thinking that way, right? Um, as opposed to forgiving your enemies, being nice to your enemies, blessing your enemies, praying for your enemies, everything. Not to say that they're my enemies, you know, because I don't hate them. And they're not my enemies. But I'm just saying, like, if something bad happens to a bad person, it's kind of like, hey, served you right. <laughs> you know, justice was served. That's God's work right there, you know? Um, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to like work on work on that video and see see how I can uh, deliver that properly. <laughs> but that is basically what I've been thinking of. Um, I, yeah. Anyway, so that's all I have for you this week. Um, next week I'm gonna continue on my training. Uh, the manager is trying to push me to actually stop training soon, so she's only given me a week for training left. And uh, my trainer is thinking that I might need more time because the doctor expects more time in training. So we'll see. I mean, I prefer more time in training because then it's more relaxed <laughs> than, you know, actually like doing the work. But <laughs> not to say that I'm not ready. It's more like maybe, you know, I just want to chill more. Uh, anyway, so that's all I got for you to this week, unless you have any other questions. Um... Yeah, thank you for hanging out, and I'll see you next week. Bye!